Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. If this is the first time we are meeting, my name is Oliver and on this channel we talk about education and early career development in Finland. And uh, during these weekly live Q&A sessions I answer your most burning questions about living, studying and working in Finland. And uh, how these live streams work is that in the description box below, so below the video, there is a link to a Google form. There is also a link to the Google form pinned into the uh, live chat. And uh, if you want me to answer your question live, uh, the best way to do that is to post your question into the Google form. The reason why I do it this way is because uh, sometimes uh, these live streams, uh, the, the live chat gets quite busy and it's very difficult for me to keep an eye out on the chat. Uh, and this is why if you post your question into the uh, into the Google form, I will have all the questions in, in front of me on the computer and I will be able to go through your questions in a first come first serve basis. <laughs> um, anyways, before we actually jump into the first questions, Eric, what's up? Welcome to the stream. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, before I jump into the first question, I just want to post the live stream into our Google, um, I'm sorry, uh, into our uh, Discord server. And uh, if you are not yet, for some reason, a member of the server, I highly recommend that you consider joining. The idea of the server is to basically build a community of people interested in living and studying in Finland. And uh, in the server, uh, I post updates about upcoming videos and live streams, like th just like just like this one, as well as we have a more personal dialogue. And uh, me and other members of the server answer each other's questions about all of these different topics. All right. Anyways, before. Uh, Without any further ado, let's actually jump into the first questions. Uh, there are a couple of questions uh, left from last week's live stream, so I will start with those, but then I will quickly jump into the questions from this week. So uh, if you want your uh, question to be answered uh, live, I highly recommend that you post your question into the Google form right now. That is the best way for you to guarantee, guarantee that I will get to answer your question live. All right, let's jump into the first question. Uh, which comes from uh, Sudha, who comes from India. And Sudha has not yet decided whether or not she wants to study in Finland, but is interested in studying a master's in dental, postgraduate or in research. <laughs> so basically a degree in dental um, de as a dentist, uh, either postgraduate or in research. And the question is, what is the scope of a bachelor's in dentistry in Finland? I am a graduate in this field. If my uh, And if my spouse has a permanent residency, uh, in Finland, am I eligible for a scholarship um, in a postgraduate degree? Uh, and is the F is Finnish language uh, skill uh, is uh, knowing how to speak Finnish um, compulsory? And uh, if yes, where do I learn, or where should I start to learn Finnish? Uh, so there's a bunch of really good questions here. Uh, so let's break this down one by one. Uh, number one, uh, what is the uh, scope of a a degree in dentistry. I don't know. Uh, I have uh, never looked into this topic before. It's a very specific uh, field and I would recommend that you simply go and check out the uh, University of Helsinki School of Medicine. They, I think they have a English taught uh, dentist uh, degree in dentistry. If not, I think that the University of Turku might have one, but I'm not quite sure. Uh, you have to remember that there's all, over 400 different English taught degrees in Finland, and so it's pretty difficult for me to keep an eye out on, on each of them. Uh, then uh, if your spouse has a permanent residency in Finland, uh, are you eligible for a scholarship? Uh, every person who applies to study in Finland in English and who is not a European Union or European Economic Area member uh, or c citizen uh, is eligible to apply for scholarships. Do you know that there are only a limited number of scholarships for each program and uh, they are they are in general of course very competitive so um, yes you will be eligible to apply for a scholarship however do know that it's th it's not a guarantee that you will get one and then question is finnish compulsory no finnish is not compulsory if you come to study in uh, in finland in english um, however if you want to work in dentistry if you want to work in the finnish healthcare uh, healthcare industry yes finnish language skills are compulsory you need to achieve a certain level of finnish language um, skills in order for you to work in finland in the finnish healthcare system and if if you want to learn Finnish, there are a mul multiple different great sources. For example, I have a, f a video on my channel where I go through a bunch of really good free 
tools that you can use online to start learning Finnish. And I would not pay for anyone, uh, for, for example, for a course before you have at least gone through those first, because you will get a good sense of the, the overall language and how hard it is to learn from those free tools. And again, you can find the video on my channel. Anyway, hope that those answered your questions. Um, then, before we actually jump into the next question, let's just say super quickly hey to hey to everyone. We have Akash, uh, Akash uh, Kupasad, what's up? Welcome to the stream. We have uh, Ies Fleischman, once again, welcome to the stream as well. We have Gravity CWI, uh, what's up? Uh, actually saying, hey, I'm from India, I love Finland, I'm planning to study masters in Finland. I need to know the requirements of the jobs there. So this is a very different, uh, difficult topic for me to answer live because it's a, such a broad question. So it, it not only require, you know, depends on your personal background, your educational background, the degree that you would li be doing here, the kind of jobs you, you would like to apply for, uh, you know, the field that you want to work in, the company that you uh, that you would be applying for. So it's impossible to, for me to say uh, what are the, you know, requirements for jobs in Finland. It's, it's way too broad of a question for me to answer. So unfortunately, I will not be able to give you any advice unless you have a more specific question about this topic. Uh, we have Prabesh, welcome to the stream as well. We have Comfort uh, uh, Bob Dung, welcome, uh, welcome to the stream as well, saying, is uh, IELTS a necessary requirement for students from English speaking countries like Africa, in Africa, <laughs> like Nigeria? Uh, of course, there might be some individual exceptions, but as a general rule of thumb, yes. If you apply to universities in Finland uh, using the normal university application systems that we have, uh, yes, uh, English language uh, proficiency tests will be required uh, from you, even if you come from an English language, um, English speaking country in Africa. I think the only exception that most universities um, have is uh, South Africa, but basically every basically every other country uh, in Africa, you would still need to do an English language proficiency test. Do you know that this the, there are only very few exceptions to these tests? Basically, there are the UK, US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. Uh, I think uh, South Africa specifically. That's that's usually it. Some some universities also accept students from other countries, uh, English speaking countries, or major. Uh, English speaking countries without doing their tests, but that's those are more like uh, exceptions to the, to the rule. Uh, th then we have Vimoti on Monty. Welcome. Hello. Welcome back uh, to the channel and to the stream. I'm actually doing quite well. Thank you very much. Uh, hopefully you're, you're doing great as well. And um, then uh, Prabesh asking, when should I apply for a student apartment? As soon as you are allowed to. So there are basically two ways to do this. Or th the reason why I say as soon as you are allowed to, because there's usually two different types of uh, rules here. Number one, uh, some, uni some um, student apartment providers have a rule that you cannot apply <laughs> for uh, an apartment from them uh, before, you know, uh, you know, super, super early. So for example, HOAS, the uh, uh, Association for Student Housing in the Helsinki region, uh, which is a nonprofit uh, providing apartments for students, you can only apply for their apartments at earliest, four months, four months before you need to move in. In that case, I would ap apply exactly four months before. Uh, if you leave it too late, then you will most likely not get an apartment. Uh, of course, if you apply, you know, three months, two months before, you, you, are, you still have good uh, opportunity to actually get an apartment. But if you leave it to the last month, you're, you're taking a risk here. Uh, second rule is that some uh, apartment providers, for example, the Aalto University Student Union, they have a rule that you can apply to their apartments the second that you get and an, uh, you get you receive the letter of admission to the university. So it doesn't matter if it's four months before you need to move in or six months. The second that you get the letter of admission to the university, you can apply for their apartments and you should apply as soon as possible because they have really long queues. So if you have, if you are coming to Finland to study in uh, starting in August or September this year, apply to student apartments now, 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 now. Go stop, stop watching the stream, go apply for apartments and then come back because you have to do, do it now. If you leave this to August, if you leave it this to, to the to late July, it is highly likely that you will not be uh, given a student apartment because the queues are so long. There, you have been warned. Great question though. Then we have Majid Ali. I will jump back to your question in just a moment. Be before that, I will uh, go back to the 
Google form um, because I will be prioritizing those questions today as well. Uh, Kanishka, what's, what's up? Welcome to the stream as well. Uh, anyway, the next question from the form comes from uh, Marina Carregnato, who comes from Italy. And uh, Marina is also a regular on the channel. And uh, she's starting school this semester at, uh, at Aldo University, doing her master's in economics. And uh, the question is, hey Oliver, I'm arriving in Espoo, which is the city uh, west from Helsinki, where Aalto University campus is. I'm arriving in Espo in August and I'll have to self-quarantine for at least three days after my arrival. Given that, could you provide information on the available options for supermarket home deliveries uh, in Finland? Thanks. Thank you very much, as always. Yeah, that's actually a great question. So there's <clears throat> so there's uh, multiple options. Uh, so let's let me just share my screen. Uh, the number one, the first option that I would use is where do we have English? 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 There we go. Uh, the the number one uh, solution would be Volt. Volt is the largest uh, food delivery company in Finland. Uh, they do mostly do restaurants, but they also nowadays do uh, grocery stores or groceries as well. <laughs> so Volt is great. They have a very good and easy to use mobile app. So that's that's awesome. Uh, then uh, we have something called Alepa Kassi. Alepa is the name of the uh, grocery store chain or the grocery stores. And then, um, or Kauppa Kassi means basically a uh, food, uh, per, you know, um, shopping bag basically. So Alepa, Kauppa Kassi or foodie is, is, is one. Uh, and this is specifically for the Alepa brand of grocery stores. Uh, it's, it's a big chain or they belong into a big chain called the S Group which is the second largest uh, grow retail store chain in Finland, if not the largest. And uh, they, they is, it's also really, really good. However, I don't think they have a mobile app for this. And then, for example, I think we have... Um, uh, let's see. We have... Uh, let's see. Mm. We have... Yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much. All right. So this page is actually only in Finnish, which which sucks. But we have K Koruaka or K Food. Uh, the the K Group or Kesko is the second really really big food chain or retail chain in, in Finland, and they also have home deliveries. However, uh, all of these, I would say that Volt, uh, Volt would be the easiest uh, because they have a very to very easy to use app, and uh, the, you know it, it's all in, in English. So I would definitely be recommending Volt. Hashtag not sponsored, by the way. Just letting you know. Great question, though. Good question. <laughs> then we have a uh, next question comes from Quartz, who comes from Nigeria, starting school this semester, doing uh, his master's in geology, which is cool. Nice. And uh, the question is, my study, study ride was cancelled after I had done my residence permit appointment. First of all, I, I'm very uh, uh, sorry to hear that. I, I hope that this, you, you are able to reapply um, or resubmit your application at some point. Uh, this sucks, uh, but uh, I hope that you know everything is fine and, and this is, there is no serious reason behind this. Um, uh, anyway, uh, can I still come to Finland if I get a residence permit? My admission was conditional. Um, in a sense, yes, sure, you could come to Finland if you get a residence permit. However, since you have applied for your residence permit based on studies, uh, your res you will most likely not be granted a residence permit because you you need to have an active um, student status in Finland, <laughs> meaning that you need to ha be admitted to a university or a university of uh, uh, applied sciences. So most likely you will not be granted a residence permit in Finland, especially not absolutely not on 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 based of uh, studies. However, uh, if you want to apply to, for a residence permit for work, then that's an another case altogether. You would uh, need to apply for that separately, and you would need to actually have someone uh, willing to hire you uh, once you come to Finland so unfortunately that is that is very unfortunate to hear uh, but this this is un also unfortunately this is the situation uh, all right uh, before we jump into to, into the next question in the form let's just super quickly jump back into the chat we have uh, so we have Majid Ali uh, again welcome and uh, Majid saying I'm from Pakistan currently working as a shifts engineer for since four months, and I have two applications as first author. Can I get a full scholarship with this profile? Absolutely no, I, no idea. <laughs> uh, thanks for the question, though, Majid. Uh, the thing with scholarships in Finland is that the minimum requirements and basically on what basis scholarships are granted 
that is not public information. Universities do not publish the uh, publish the reasons for based on which uh, they grant each of their scholarships. You have to take into account that there's a lot of different applicants with different backgrounds, <coughs> and there's only a limited amount of scholarships available. So it's absolutely impossible for me to say simply because there's no information about this anywhere and I don't have any kind of secret internal sources at the, at the schools. Uh, so it's impossible for me to say whether or not those things have any impact on your <laughs> chances of getting, getting a scholarship. Work experience might have, uh, you know, experience, but being a, a published author depends on what field you're looking looking to uh, you know study if you want to study literature then that might help you but if you want to study geology uh, being a published author unless it, it's in in the academics not sure whether that's going to have any impact um, again impossible to say however you also have to take into account that there are so many other things that the universities also take into account when deciding who to grant scholarships um, so if I if I were you, I would focus on, you know, having a good academic record. So basically, your uh, if you apply for a bachelor's, then you would need to have good high school grades. If you're applying for a master's, you should have really good bachelor's grades. And then, um, for example, try to get as good uh, grades from your language proficiency tests, any kind of uh, other ap aptitude tests. So if you need to do the GMATs, GREs, SATs or something like this, try to do as well uh, with those as possible uh, or then uh, also if you, for example, need to write some kind of a motivation letter, I would focus on that quite heavily as well. So again, there's a lot of different components here and, uh, you know, getting, you know, really good grades from one of them and not so good grades from others. I don't know, it might even out again, it's impossible to say. <laughs> uh, then we have we have also Valentin Ionita. Welcome to the stream as well. Oh, what's up? Awesome to have you here. We have Yuan Yao Wong. Welcome to the stream as well. We have Adicha. Welcome back, dude. Awesome to have you here again. We have Muhammad Sabur uh, Sabur Ahmed. Welcome back. Awesome to have you once again. Uh, uh, guys, you know what to do. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know by posting them into the Google form in the description box below, and I will keep on trucking with the questions. Talking of which, the next question from the forum comes from Adicha, who comes from India, uh, is still in high school, has not personally decided yet whether um, which schools uh, she would be applying for, but is interested in doing a bachelor's in criminology. <laughs> but uh, my parents want me to study pre-medicine. Sure. Um, I don't want to go on a rant here. Uh, my suggestion has always been to everyone study what you want to study and what you're interested in. Uh, if you basically study what your parents wants you to do, it's highly, it's much more likely that you will not be happy <laughs> with what with your studies and what what you basically do, which usually has a cor is is correlated also with not doing as well as you would do in a subject that you really like. Uh, I'm a good example of this. I actually studied accounting and, and business administration in my bachelor's and I really didn't like it at all. And I when I changed uh, and I actually got really bad grades in my bachelor's. And then when I changed my major uh, for my master's, uh, my grades got near to perfect. So my final GPA from uh, my university in my master's, I think, is 4.9 something out of five. So almost pitch perfect. Uh, I didn't do any extra work. I simply uh, studied a, f a subject that I was more interested in. Anyway, um, n nothing more about this. I don't want to go to on, on a rant about this. Um, of course, your parents do have a, have a say in this as well. Anyway, the, qu the question was, is it hard to settle in there? Like being from a very different country, is it hard uh, to... Uh, settle down or talk to people or just, you know, the daily basis things uh, that uh, one could easily do in their country. Also, uh, not to be offensive, uh, not to be offensive towards Finns, but are, uh, is Finland uh, an Asian friendly country? Great questions, really important topics. So let's, let's actually talk about this for a while. <laughs> Let's actually start with the second question first, because I think that that's actually easier. Yes, Finland is definitely a Asian friendly country, quote unquote. Um, I, I haven't heard anything negative being toward, you know, uh, pointed towards Asian people in, in Finland. Of course, every single country has a bunch of a-holes and uh, racist people, but there is nothing 
in Finland or in Finnish people <laughs> that would be negative uh, or there, there I haven't heard any news stories, any blogs, anything that would be targeted towards Asian people. Of course, you know, of course, there are always people who, who don't want uh, foreigners to come to Finland or to Sweden or Germany or America. Uh, but, you know, you always get those people when you have a lot of a <laughs> lot of citizens. So so I, absolutely. Yes, Finland is a Asian uh, friendly country, quote unquote. I actually usually even don't want to talk about this topic because I, I don't see any reason to separate people into groups this way uh, because Finland is is an evenly good country for you know residents of any country so there uh, then the question about is it hard to settle in depends so this this absolutely depends on on your background <laughs> on your let's say cultural experiences as well as your personality so I would say that there are a a few things that you need to take into account <laughs> when you move to Finland. I have multiple videos about this um, where I actually talk about these topics in more detail. So check those out from the channel. However, uh, there are a couple of things. First, uh, if you come from a country or uh, from a culture or from a family that is hyper social, where you basically do everything together with your family or friends, it's going to be a bit more difficult to cope, uh, settle in in Finland because we are very Finnish people are in general quite private. Uh, first of all, we don't like to talk about money. We don't like to talk about, like to talk about uh, religion or politics. So those three don't don't even try, especially when you don't know a person well. Uh, then uh, on the other hand, there are I had a I had a I've had an experience or multiple experiences where I had a couple of international friends who came to Finland and of course they were alone and they didn't have that, that many friends and they basically wanted to hang out with me all the time like 24 7 before school during school and then after school and that is very taxing for many Finnish people and we basically when we come home from school or or from work uh, of course going out is very nice but a lot of people want to just spend time on their on their own and kind of detox from all the social stuff so in that sense Finnish people might look a bit um internal or, or um, uh, how do you say, a bit um, introverted to some people. Uh, and please don't take this uh, uh, as a negative thing towards you. It's just how we are. So so kind of this, if you if you come from a hyper, hyper social culture where you talk a lot, uh, you want to hang out with other people all the time, then then there's a bit, bit to get used to in Finland. Uh, second is of course the 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 weather and the the environment and and seasons, especially during during uh, midsummer and midwinter. There's a big difference between between Finland and many other countries. Uh, for example, right now it's actually mid uh, midsummer this weekend, and uh, a couple of day couple of days ago it was the longest day in in the year in Finland, meaning that the the sun is up the longest. And basically, the sun set in Helsinki, which is the southernmost tip of Finland. Basically, a uh, couple of days ago the sun set at 11 in the evening. And it uh, went back up around three o'clock, four o'clock a.m. So the sun is below the horizon only for a couple of hours. And if you if you live up north, there is there is a long period over a month long period where the sun doesn't go down below the horizon at all during summer. So it's it's like midday all the time. So that's that's something that some people get uh, uh, don't get to get used to that fast. <laughs> There's a couple of tricks here that you need to use. First, uh, get shades into your bedroom so that you can actually darken up the bedroom completely, uh, and just try to get as good of a good as good of a daily rhythm as possible. Wake up early, uh, do exercise, go to school, work, and try to then go to bed uh, when you would normally go because that that way you can keep your internal clock working the best. The, say, the kind of opposite goes to winter because during winter the sun actually goes down really early. And for example, in Helsinki during mid midwinter we only have a few hours of sun uh, sunlight. And then uh, if you go all the way to Lapland, you for example study at o in Oulu uh, at, at the um, University of Oulu, you have a period uh, this about the same length of period, a month or so, where you don't have almost you do have sunlight, but the sun doesn't go up over the horizon line. So, so it's dark all the time. So th th these are kind of two extremes that a lot of people don't cope with that well, especially during the first year. During winter, eat a lot of D, uh, vitamin D, have uh, good daylight colored lights like this one at, in your home. And again, keep, keep up the rhythm. And then when, it's, uh, when you have sunshine outside, go out as much as possible to kind of get that energy from there 
and uh, you will do just fine. Uh, then uh, if you come from Asia, of course, the food is quite a bit different. So you, you need to first look for the different stores that sell, sell ingredients that you would like to use. And, and you kind of you might have to have some coping with the local cuisine uh, per se, but I, I think that's the least of your problems. Uh, then finally, the I would say that the study culture and and the job uh, work culture they're completely different uh, to many Asian countries. First of all, our our work culture here is much more relaxed. Uh, so we. Finnish people have over a month of paid holidays each year, <laughs> and we really want to keep those holidays. Uh, and for example, July is the biggest holiday month uh, in Finland. Many people have four four weeks of uh, paid holiday during July. Uh, so we we want to keep a healthy work, you know, work life balance. That's that's one. Um, and and our work hours, kind of mandatory work hours, are actually pretty decent. So so that's actually cool. Then uh, in terms of school, I think the biggest thing that you would need to consider uh, based on what I've heard, uh, again, don't take this negatively if I'm, I'm incorrect, um, but uh, I've heard that in some Asian countries where you have a lot of competition in, at university, the only way for you to compete against others is to basically try to get as good grades as possible by learning stuff by heart and doing really well in, in exams. Th th that's actually pretty different in Finland because in Finland we have mu much more applied exams. So just learning a book all the way by heart doesn't really help you at all because you need to understand the concepts that are ta taught and you need to be able to apply those information in your exams. So uh, don't learn everything by heart. Try to understand the stuff that you're learning and that are being taught and then try to apply the information. So I, I, I'd say those are the biggest things that you should definitely take, it, take, take into account. Anyway, hope that that answered your question. Really good question though. Um, sorry for the long rant for everyone. Uh, I'm, I'm going to continue with the questions in just a second. Just saying hey to everyone who just joined. Um, <laughs> we have we have the uh, Sudha. We have also uh, Sudha on the, in, the, in the chat. What's up? Welcome to the uh, stream. I actually a might have answered your question. It was uh, the first or second question in the entire stream. So go back to the start and, and check your the, uh, answer there. I actually answered it, but the, you know, as a summary, I don't, I don't know nothing about, I don't know anything about dentistry or studying or working as a dentist. So that's basically it. There's certain resources that you need to use in order to find information about that, but I'm, I'm not the right person. Uh, the healthcare industry is, is quite complicated in Finland and I just don't have enough information. Then we have Kanishka, we have uh, Vishal, welcome to the stream as well. We have Tsailord, welcome to the stream as well. Awesome to have you here again. Then we have Return to the Monkey at all cost. What's up? Welcome to the stream as well. And we have, let's see, we have Gravity. Uh, no, sorry, we already had Gravity here. Oh, I think that's everyone. Let's move on to the next question. Uh, <laughs> Let's on to the next. Uh, let's move on to the next question, uh, who, which comes from Disha, who comes from India, and Disha is applying to any university teaching business or computer science. So in Finland, that's quite a lot of schools, <laughs> to be honest, uh, do, do, to do a bachelor's level degree. That's cool. And the question is, actually, no question. Just saying, thank you for your val valuable time and effort. Thanks for answering my questions. You're most welcome. Uh, hopefully you're getting some value out of the stream. By the way, guys, if you're actually getting some value out of the stream and for my answers, I would also, of course, appreciate if you could uh, gently bump the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Uh, it would be awesome to get to 45 likes before the end of the stream, and, and we're currently at 14, so that's highly appreciated. Anyway, the next question comes from Sabda, who comes from Indonesia, and Sabda is applying to uh, do his master's in English and uh, or hospitality. I think in English, in the field of hospitality. <laughs> cool. And the question is, I got my bachelor's degree already here in my home country in Indonesia. And uh, is there any way for me to work in Finland without studying there? Uh, but if you ask me, I would love to take a master's degree in Finland and hopefully will get a scholarship for that um, because it's quite quite expensive to study in Finland for me. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely the true. Some of the tuition fees in Finland are pretty high. Uh, it, they're actually, if you compare the uh, tuition fees in Finland in Finnish universities and uh, universities of applied sciences, they're actually not that high when you look at a global scale. Um, however, of course, I understand that, you know, paying, for example, 10,000 euros a, mo a year it's a lot of money. Uh, no, no denying that. Absolutely, it's it's a lot of money. So scholarships will take you a long way. 
so if you have a bachelor's degree in hospitality industry, yes, you can absolutely work in Finland. <laughs> and there's actually quite a lot of demand for um, people specifically working in the hospitality or tourism industry in Finland. And uh, there's, um, let's see, there is actually a really interesting website. Um, so if you want to, for example, work in the Finnish tourism industry, the best website for you or the best area for you to work in is basically Lapland, which is the northern part of Finland, uh, where we have uh, our you know biggest ski centers, uh, holiday uh, centers. And uh, if you just Google work in Lapland and um, you actually can let, uh, let me just show you really quickly. So if you just Google work in Lapland, you get this uh, link from lapland.fi seasonal work in Lapland. Um, it doesn't have to be seasonal, but that's that's one option. You can actually get to this uh, Lapland website, or it's the official Finnish Lapland website. And you can actually learn a lot of the information about, for example, working in Finland, in Lapland, specifically during the winter season. You know, reindeer, hello. Um, where when a lot of tourists come there to ski. And uh, this is actually something that we would love you to come and do because there's a, actually a huge demand for educated workforce in Lapland, especially during the winter season. And uh, I, I highly recommend that you start looking information from here. Uh, then again, if you want to um, study in Finland, that's absolutely also possible. There is a multiple, we have multiple master's level degrees in hospitality management and in tourism in Finland. For example, I think at the University of Lapland, they, they I think have at least one um, degree in this. So please check it out. Um, let's actually, um, let's see. Uh, let's see, let's see super quickly. Tourism research, no, that's not the correct one. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let's see. So uh, the University of Lapland, we, yes, 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 yes. Master studies, we have, uh, let's see what we have. We have master studies, master degree programs. We have, <laughs> yeah, master's degree program in tourism, culture, and international management would be one, for example, for you. And of course, then this would be, you know, this would allow you to work in fin Finland in the tourism industry, for example, in managerial roles. <laughs> of course, we have master's degree program in northern tourism, which, which is even better if you want to specifically work in the uh, Nordic parts of, of uh, the globe. Uh, it doesn't have to be Finland. It could be, you know, Nordics, Finland, Sweden, Norway. Uh, it could be Iceland. It could be Canada. It could be, you know, uh, in Alaska, in, in the US or so. So, you know, uh, consider this. So these were in the University of Lapland, if you're interested. Right. Anyway, great, great questions. Then the next question from the forum comes from Eric uh, from South Africa. Awesome to have you here again, as, as mentioned before. And uh, Eric is coming to Finland for uh, work, not for school, working in the IT industry. And um, there's a couple of questions here or uh, a longer question. Since I'm a European Union citizen, I just need to apply for a, for a EU registration, uh, that is correct, and be able to work in Finland right away. However, uh, the Finnish Immigration Service states that if I want to work in Finland as a freelancer, I have to apply for a residence permit for an entrepreneur. That currently takes 12 months to process. That's insane. Uh, it's not very clear on their website if I could enter Finland as a EU citizen and just work as a freelancer or if I have to go through the above process. Do you have any experience here? <laughs> My understanding, that's Eric, that's a good question. And of course, please, you know already, but every, for everyone else as well, please take into account that I'm not an immigration expert and the residence permit applications in Finland are always processed in, on, on an ind individual basis. So please take everything that I say. <laughs> with a grain of salt. Um, however, having said this, my understanding is that if you are a EU citizen, you can simply move to Finland as long as you have the financial resources to live here without relying on the Finnish social uh, welfare system. Um, that would basically mean that if you just have the income, so if you, for example, work from Finland uh, as a freelancer uh, for a uh, foreign South African um, customer, and uh, they basically pay you uh, to an a bank account uh, that you have in Finland, for example, um, I think that should be enough. But what I would do in your case, just to make sure, <laughs> uh, I, I, again, you know, um, uh, 
I kind of repeat this to every single person who, who asks me about this. Please contact the Finnish Immigration Service uh, either via phone or via email. I know that they are super busy at this time, especially now that the borders are opening because there's so many people... <laughs> people applying for residence permits. However, one way uh, that I would recommend you to do, unless you have have not done this before, and I think that I've uh, advised you to do this before, use their customer service chat that you can see here on, on the bottom right corner. Uh, you have to do this uh, during their normal service hours. So that means I think from 11 to 3 p.m., uh, uh, 15, 0, 0, 3 p.m. Uh, during uh, basic, basically Helsinki time. So you, you need to be able to ask the questions during the office hours and then just write into the chat. I, can, I know that you can't see the chat, but just write, uh, can I talk to a person, uh, question mark, and then the chat should say, I will connect you to a, uh, you know, people co colleague of mine, a person colleague of mine. However, there is no, no human colleagues right now live. So uh, I would recommend that you do this. Um, but, but my understanding, again, I'm not an... My watch doesn't understand this either. Um, anyway, so yeah, the my understanding is that you do not need to apply for the re uh, residence permit for entrepreneurs because you are a EU resident. So just take, you know take that into account, um, and with a grain of salt as always. Uh, yeah, well, that's what I thought. Saying uh, Eric saying in the chat will bother me, Green. Please do as much as you want. Uh, you know wish. Uh, there is a, a actually a very good campaign going on uh, where uh, a lot of people want Migri, Migri to, to reform itself because there has been a lot of delays and problems with them during the last few years. And uh, I think that there's a definitely a need to basically restructure the entire uh, organization so that we can process the, you know, uh, residence permit applications faster. <laughs> anyway... Mm, Safai Hamani saying uh, in the chat, hey Oliver, what's up? Can I have your email? There, I have an email address in the description box below at the end. <laughs> but do know that it takes me a long time for, uh, for me to actually answer any emails because there's a lot of them. And I always prioritize questions that come in the YouTube comments as well as in our Discord server. Again, if uh, actually guys, if you are not yet a member in our Discord server, uh, there's, a, there's a link in the chat right now. <laughs> uh, uh, the idea of the server is to build a community of people interested in uh, living and studying, uh, living, studying and working in Finland. And uh, we have a lot of lot more personal discussions about these topics in the server. So, you know, consider joining the server if you have any questions. Uh, it takes me a long time. It, it might me, take me two months to answer an email. So just take that this into account. Uh, anyway, the next question comes from Hank from Japan. And uh, Hank is starting school this semester at Aldo University doing his master's in engineering. <laughs> and the question is, where can I get information about the student apartments uh, and when should I apply? Good question, and I answered this before right now. If you have been admitted to study in Finland in this uh, starting this semester, apply to student apartments now. Now, now, now. Stop watching this stream. I will give you instructions how to do it in just a second. When I have done so, stop watching this stream and apply for now, because if you postpone this anymore, uh, for example, to, to mid-July, it might already be late. So please, please, please apply on time. There's two options for you if you study at... Um, uh, if you study at Aalto University, there's two options for you. <laughs> First is uh, Aalto University Student Union Apartment. So we have in Finland, each university has a student union and many of these unions are uh, over 100 years old and they have a lot of apartments around the their cities, respective cities that are very cheap and they're specifically for their members. So uh, for uh, Aalto University Student Union Apartments, you need to study at Aalto University. So Google AYY Apartments and <laughs> you should have this link, ayy.fi forward slash forward slash housing click that and from this website you can actually apply for student apartments please apply for these now right now then second hoas.fi uh, let me just change this into english uh, hoas is a foundation for student housing in the Helsinki region it's a non-profit it's actually owned by different student unions for example ayy in the Helsinki region so these guys are actually owned by students in Finland and it's a non-profit. It's a sponsor on the channel. Hashtag this video or live stream is not sponsored by Hoas, but a lot of people know that this is a uh, sponsor on the channel. Uh, apply for their apartments as well now. They, they have really clear instructions on how to apply. It should not take too long. Uh, you need to have your passport information and, and for, example, for example, your financial information when you apply. Do it now. Stop watching the stream 
go apply now. If you wait for a couple of weeks, it might already be too late if you want to have an apartment by the end of August or at the start of September. So you have been warned. Uh, this applies to everyone who wants to apply for student apartments for the upcoming semester. Do it now. <laughs> uh, Phoenix me Memes, what's up? Welcome to the stream. I'm actually doing quite well. Thank you very much for asking. Uh, hopefully you're doing good as well. Uh, Safari Hamani saying already sent you a question in the link you put. I wish you answer me. Uh, hopefully I will be able to get to your question. There's actually not that many questions in the form. It takes me a while for for you know for me to go through them because there's so many of them. But don't worry, I will get there in time. <laughs> Awesome. The next, next question comes from Jess Velasco, who comes from the Philippines, and she is coming to Finland for work and for school and working in the travel and tourism management industry. Awesome. And there's a couple of questions here. And uh, <coughs> excuse me, Jess is saying, hey, Oliver. Uh, hello again, Oliver. Happy midsummer. Thank you very much. Uh, the same for you as well. Uh, I have a couple of questions that makes me more interested uh, on a Finnish, uh, in the Finnish job market. Deep in my heart, thank you for your time answering these questions. You're most welcome. This is the reason why the entire channel exists. So I'm happy, happy to hang out here. Number one, what do you think of foreigners trying to apply for jobs in the public or governmental entry-level positions? Any points to consider? For example, let's say I live in Finland for a, uh, for a long time. My degree and experience is in travel and tourism industry, and I'm thinking about applying, uh, applying, uh, for a job in any kind of a tourism office or department. Do we need to be a civil service passer in order to apply for government offices like that? <laughs> Great questions. A couple of points here. First of all, actually, most of tourism offices and uh, departments are not government inst uh, or institutions or organizations. There's a lot of uh, third party um, private market uh, organizations for this. And for those, of course, you do not need any kind of, uh, you know, uh, official civil service uh, credentials. Uh, if you apply, however, if you want to apply for a tourism management board or <laughs> tourism, uh, you know, tourism office that is actually government uh, run by a government run organization, uh, they're not run by the parliament, but they're, you know, government offices. Uh, some of these organizations do require you to have a specific uh, educational background. Um, it depends on the job, but for example, in Finland, if you want to do, uh, well, there's a, there's certain, uh, you know, fields or, or certain offices in which if you want to work in, you need to have a certain type of master's or bachelor's degree. Uh, however, this of course is a whole different question altogether. And I would say that, you know, if you have a degree in tourism and, you know, uh, tourism industry you should be fine however there's a lot of different tourism and you know travel related companies in finland uh, that uh, are really in need of really highly educated and talented people and actually talking about this <laughs> uh, jess if you would please please send me a message on linkedin there's a link to my linkedin profile in the de uh, description box below please send me a uh, Question, uh, connect with me on LinkedIn and please, when you send a connection request, uh, also add in a short message saying, hey, it's Jess from YouTube, uh, ask you a question in the live stream. And I will try to connect you with someone because uh, we do have a huge demand for people in this field. And uh, if you're interested, I could try to, you know, kind of link you into the correct uh, you know, direction. Uh, however, it of course will take a bit, bit, bit effort uh, from my behalf, so it, it might take a while. But you know, connect with me in LinkedIn. Uh, link in the description box below, or if you can't find the link, then just go to LinkedIn and look for my name. Uh, you should find me quite easy. And then the second question is, what is the standard dress code if I'm invited for job interviews in Finland? This is actually a very good question. Thank you for very much for asking this, <laughs> and this of course applies to every single person. Uh, Standard dress code in Finland is that there's really no standard dress code in Finland, period. Uh, however, uh, smart casual is always good. You know, smart casual, if you just Google, if you don't know what smart casual means, uh, it's always, you know, acceptable. <laughs> however, I, I would say that the best way for you to figure out what kind of a dress code you should follow is by actually going to the website of the company that you're applying for uh, and try to kind of look if they have any kind of behind the scenes pictures or videos of the company. And actually, uh, a lot of companies, if you go to their website, you can actually scroll scroll down and uh, go to their Instagram. And a lot of companies in Finland use Instagram as kind of a, a behind the scenes social media channel where they post a lot of pictures of their employees, videos about their you know internal events and so on. <laughs> and that is actually a great tool for you to figure out how to dress into the interview because you basically don't want to overdress. You don't want to underdress especially. Uh, but you you basically want to just follow the company culture. 
a couple of examples here. If you apply to uh, work in the in private equity or, for example, in in the finance industry in general, it is quite uh, it is it is okay for you to put on a you know black suit or uh, a, you know a dress uh, for for the ladies. Um, or if you want to, to have a dress anyways, that doesn't really, that's, that's your prerogative. Um, however, if you, for example, apply to work in a game company, game, game company or game startup, have going in a black suit and, and in, with a tie might not fit, fit into the culture. Uh, of course, don't go in with a hoodie, but you know, smart, casual, uh, you know, nice pants or, 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 or for example, a, a dress, uh, less, a bit less casual or a bit more casual dress. Uh, you know, um, for example, for men, it could be a blazer uh, for women as well. Um, you know, uh, um, you know, a dress shirt might be OK. Chinos for men. Uh, what else? I think that's a good, you know, couple of good rules of thumb. Anyway, yeah, hope, hope, hopefully I, I answered your question. And uh, again, uh, Jess, uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, again, link in the description box below. And I, I might be able to help you a bit with the, the job market in, in uh, travel and tourism industry. Eric, thank you so much for the super chat uh, with uh, a, a um, message. Thanks as always. Have to go. My Finnish course starts now. Cool. So Eric is actually studying Finnish right now. That's awesome. Uh, again, uh, once again, if you watch this in replay, that's highly appreciated as always. Thank you very much for the support. Anyway, the next question comes from uh, Parth Shevli, who comes from India. And Parth, of, Parth is, of course, uh, a regular on the channel as well. And Parth is starting school this semester, doing his master's in... Um, at the Metropolia, University of Applied Sciences in... I don't remember the, the field, doesn't matter. And the question is, I'm arriving to Finland in September, so according to you, when is the ideal time to apply for an internship, internship or part-time job? Uh, do the first semester without applying for any kind of a job. That's my tip. Uh, simply because it will take you time to kind of <laughs> uh, settle in, get to know, uh, get to, you know... Uh, get used to the, the school system here, you know, get used to moving around, etc. Plus the first winter is going to be the roughest one for you, especially since you come from a country which, which is so different. So my recommendation is don't apply for any kind of a job during the first semester. That means basically from uh, September to, to Christmas. And if you want to, you know, start looking for a part-time job, then I would maybe at earliest start looking in January. Uh, however, you also have to take into account that that most summer jobs are also, <laughs> most companies start looking for people for for the summer uh, already during January, February. So um, I would recommend that you don't work during the entire first academic year, but rather start applying for jobs in January or Febru February. Uh, for the summer and then after the summer you might then be able to continue as a part-time employee or you could then apply for a part-time job se separately but my recommendation for everyone who comes from a comp uh, from a country that is m much different from Finland uh, culturally and geographically that you should not necessarily start working during your first academic year simply because because it's it takes already quite a lot of effort and energy to to settle in and and you know get used to the education system and if you add on the pressure of working at the same time it might be too much and people burn out really easily plus if you do both school and and work at the same time <coughs> you will not be able to participate in many of the student activities which are a very important part of the Finnish student experience so if, if you start working right after coming to Finland you're going to miss out a lot of fun so my recommendation don't do that uh, good question good question then the next question comes from Mina Moto, who comes from Colombia. And Mina is starting school this semester, uh, doing uh, her bachelor's uh, in a in a in a uh, in a field. <laughs> Does it ha has not uh, written here. And the question is, what is a normal rent for uh, what is a normal rent for a apartment with uh, furnitures? Uh, and uh, so, if the rent for a furnished apartment with a balcony and a gym. Uh, also, should we have to find a roommate or uh, will the company provide us a roommate uh, for us? And what benefits do we get from there? So uh, if you want to apply for a, an apartment with a balcony, uh, you have to be paying extra. However, do note that if you have a, if you apply for a shared apartment, you will not have a balcony of your own in your room. Those, those don't really exist in Finland. 
rather you will have a balcony in the apartment in itself. Uh, it's impossible for me to say how much they will be because it depends on the city, the location, the size of the apartment, uh, etc. However, if you you know want a room in a shared apartment, those start from around 200 euros and go all the, all the way up to 500 euros per month, depending on, again, the variables that I mentioned. Uh, do note that apartments themselves do not have a gym. Some student buildings do have a, a shared gym for the entire building, but those are still quite rare and they usually actually don't impact your uh, rent, the, the cost of rent that much. So uh, it's impossible to say how much the gym will impact the, the rent because if they have a gym, that's fine, but you will not really see a difference there in, in terms of the rent, the rent. It's just, you know, getting lucky. And then uh, if you apply for a, uh, for a room in a shared apartment, most student apartment providers will give you a... Uh, roommate and you don't have to find or you even cannot find a roommate of, on your own <laughs> but rather the the company will uh, assign you a roommate and vice versa uh, then what benefits do we get from there uh, of course there's a lot of student benefits in finland uh, i have uh, there's so many things to talk about here what i recommend you recommend you to do instead of listening me here is i recommend you to actually go to my channel uh, I'll just show it really quickly here. Go to the channel and then click this search button here and then uh, benefit, look for benefit. And then I have a video here saying student benefits in Finland explained. I talk about uh, the student benefits, discounts, etc. in detail. So go and check that video after this stream. <laughs> Great question though. Then the next question comes from Depan Chakavarti. Uh, Depan Chakaravahti. No, sorry. Depan Chakka Chakaravarti Too many consonants. Chakaravarti. I think that's close enough. Depan Chakaravarti. Darn. Depan comes from India and uh, is applying to um, study a master's in management, uh, cybercrime or science related stuff. Uh, and the question is, hi Oliver, I'm planning to study a master's in Finland and ge getting settled there. Can you please tell me the requirements in Finland, like the fields which have, um, which are uh, in more demand? Uh, basically, I need to know um, what fields uh, have most open positions. <laughs> I saw many videos, but I can't be able to find, I, I'm not able to find, you know, what are the fields that are in most demand in Finland. And I'm also having uh, Ireland, Ireland in my list uh, as a country. And they have a they have a lot of requirements. Um, for ex for example, uh, they have a lot of demand for people in IT, cybercrime, data and uh, analysis, and uh, like that. Can you clarify the requirements in Finland? <laughs> so this is a very difficult question for me to answer. It's a very broad question, but as a general rule of thumb, uh, if you have a degree in in IT, it doesn't really matter what it is in IT. It could be data science, it could be software development, AI, machine learning, um, you know, general engineering, for example. So uh, any, if you have a degree in IT, uh, IT, if you have a degree in business, or if you have a degree in healthcare, those will always have a high demand in Finland. And um, you know, of course, you know, it doesn't really matter what the, what kind of degree you have. This is something that I say every every single week. <laughs> Your degree doesn't really matter per, per se. So if it, what I mean with this is that if you have two doctorates and five master's degrees from Harvard and Yale, but if you are a if you are a an a-hole and no one likes you, no one wants to hire you no matter what kind of credentials you have. However, if you have a degree in business and you're if you have a bachelor's degree in business from whatever school, but you're super good at what you do. And you have been, you are able to show that you, uh, your expertise to recruiters, you will be able, to, you will be able to find jobs easier uh, compared to the other other situation. So it doesn't really matter what kind of a degree you have. Uh, I would not choose your field based on what field has the most uh, in-demand jobs. Simply because a that changes all the time. It might be that you know you study certain kind of software development and that goes out of business, <laughs> and that or that goes out of trend, and then you don't have any any jobs anymore. Or it might be that you study to become an accountant because there is a high demand for accounting right now. However, it might be that in five years all of the accounting jobs are fully automated and robotized, and you don't have a job. It might be that you become a nurse and then those become automated as well. So it doesn't really matter what the job is or what what the field you should not apply for a degree based on what 
field is in high demand because that changes and you have to work 60 years before your retirement anyways. So things change all the time. Apply for a field that you are really interested in. A, because usually the things that you're really interested in, you are better at than, than other stuff. B, uh, you know, if you are really, really good at what you do, no matter the field, you will find a job and a good paying one. So there, that, that said. But as a general rule of thumb, if you really want to know IT, business, those are really good good ones. So yeah, definitely. Anyways, 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 the next question comes from, by the way, just mentioning uh, for the people in the chat, asking me, you know, the same question multiple times will not speed up the process. I will not answer your question any faster. So just letting you know. So uh, do please stay patient. <laughs> Anyway, the next question comes from Jay from the Philippines and Jay is applying to do a master's in biochemistry. And the question is, how, how is the pharmaceutical industry job market there in Finland? I'm planning to pursue a, ma pursue a master's in biochemistry. I'm 35 years old already. Would that affect my goals? No, your age will not affect your goals at all. <laughs> well, unless you're, you know, close to retirement. Um, however, uh, the pharmaceutical industry in Finland is, my, in my understanding, it's, it's good. And uh, especially if you have a degree. And uh, again, if you have a degree, you have work experience and you're really good at what you do, you will absolutely find work in Finland. The cool thing is that many of the, the jobs in the pharmaceutical industry, especially in the back end, at the, in the lab, they do not require you to speak any Finnish. And you need to, don't need to, um, you need to get certified uh, by the Finnish kind of government, governing institution that takes care of the healthcare industry however you don't need to to learn finnish to work many in many of the lab uh jobs so uh absolutely yes it's it's good here um hard to say you know what it's uh, how is it compared to many other countries <laughs> but my understanding is that it's it's good here and um uh, definitely something that uh, i would recommend someone to pursue if they're interested in alexi what's up welcome welcome to the stream um just letting you know, I, I saw your message. I will reply to you uh, as soon as possible. Uh, uh, the short answer to your question is yes, absolutely. Thank you. That's that's very generous. And by the way, it's it's absolutely freaking warm here. I'm sweating like I'm. It feels like I I'm you know swimming right now. You might not see it, but I'm sweating <laughs> sweating like like no one's business. It's it's really warm. Uh, we had a really big heat wave in, in Finland just for the last few days. And we actually had a massive storm hit yes, Helsinki yesterday. It was pretty cool. A lot of uh, lightning strikes in the in the center of Helsinki. Anyways, the next question comes from Su Su uh, Sudha uh, from India. And Sudha is coming to do a master's in dentis dentistry. And uh, the question is, uh, what is the scope of dentistry in Finland? And how can I apply to practice it? And uh, is Finnish language uh, compulsory for uh, working dentistry or dentist? Uh, any And any scholarships uh, available for a master's degree in this field? Uh, all right, super quickly <coughs> to the question, the scope of, uh, of dentistry, uh, you will become a dentist. That's it. You, you can do a master's in dentistry and then you become a dentist that or practicing dentist. That's basically it. I'm sure that you can specialize then to do th certain kind of stuff. For example, root canal specialist. That's that's something that you could do. But I don't know anything else else about dentistry. Uh, it's not a field that I've been looking for <laughs> or looking into because it's so specialized and the healthcare industry is very regulated. So it's very difficult to find information there. Uh, how can you apply in for uh, to practice it? You need to have a degree certified in Finland. So basically, if you have a bachelor's in dentistry in uh, in uh, uh, India, you need to come to Finland to do a master's here. And uh, after you have graduated, you will be then uh, certified by the board of uh, whatever. I don't remember the English name, but it's called Valvira in Finnish. It's basically the uh, governing institution in Finland that takes care of healthcare industry certifications. Uh, so you need to have a degree done in Finland. And then to your question, is Finnish language compulsory? Yes, you need to be able to speak Finnish at a satisfactory level in order to um, serve Finnish customers because it's basically the law. Uh, and um, the que last question, any scholarships uh, available for a master's in dentistry? If there are any master's programs in dentistry in English, then yes, they will have scholarships. Basically, as a rule of thumb, any English taught degree in Finland that um, 
any any English de uh, taught degree in Finland will have scholarships available for non-European Union and non-European economic area citizens. However, there's not enough scholarships for everyone, so you need to compete for the scholarship. <coughs> there we go. <coughs> uh, Alex is saying that you need to buy a fan if necessary. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, that's that's definitely something that we should do. Cidrak uh, uh, actually asking, do you not have AC in Finland? No, we actually don't have AC. Uh, you know, pre-installed in in most Finnish uh, apartments. The reason being that Finnish apartments are very well insulated and they are mostly prepared for the winter, for the cold. But the, the heat waves that we have been having in Finland during the recent years, they're not normal to Finland. We are not used to having 30 degrees Celsius in Finland during the summer. So those at those times, it's it's very hot in here. Normally, if it's like 22 degrees or, or so, we don't need any kind of an AC. It's because the, the uh, apartments are well insulated as well as well um, treated in a sense. But when it goes over 20, six or so it, it gets quite hot uh, and again it's not normal to have ac in a finnish home because we don't usually need them it's just a few days a year in finland during the summer that it's really really hot so so you know that's that's something and we complain every single year as we Finns do uh Tsudrak saying oh noted uh, noted as someone who lives in a hot country it, it's literal hell here 40 degrees celsius cheese ACs are necessary to survive. Yeah, that's basically you need to have them them to survive, you know, to stay alive, <laughs> basically. Yeah, but no, no, in Finland we don't have ACs. Of course, if you have, you know, your own building or separate house built, then you might have a, an AC installed separately. Uh, anyway, the next question comes from Safaya, who comes from Morocco, is still in high school and uh, interested in a bachelor's in finance at the University of Oulu. And the question is, I will take my baccalaureate in 2022, so what is the perfect time for the inscription? Um, I don't know. I don't, unfortunately, um, Safaya, I'm, I'm very sorry, but I have not looked into the baccalaureate degrees. So, unfortunately, I don't, I don't have an answer here. I simply, this is not a topic that I've gotten um, familiarized myself with. So, unfortunately, I don't have an answer here. My apologies. Anyways, <clears throat> the next question comes from Majid Ali, who comes from Pakistan. And uh, Majid Ali is applying to uh, Aldi University, the University of Oulu, or the University of Tampere to do a master's in environmental engineering. Cool, that's very nice. <clears throat> and the question is scholarship opportunities. <laughs> Please check out the scholarships, op uh, scholarships available at each university by using Google. So what you need to do <coughs> is simply go to Google, Aldo University, you're gonna see it. I just googled this myself. Scholarships, Google that, and you get the first page in the results. And specifically, use this www.alto.fi. Don't go to into.alto.fi. This is the internal page or the intranet for Alto University. Go here, and then on this page, you have all the information that you need about scholarships, what kind of scholarships are available, how big they are, how to apply for them, uh, how they're decided on the duration of the scholarship. Uh, they have links to third-party scholarship options as well. Please do this individually for each university, because in Finland, scholarships are uh, individual for each university and university program. Uh, there are no general kind of um, universal scholarships available. <laughs> Rather, you need to always apply for scholarships based on the school that you're applying to. In addition, there's multiple things that you need to know about the application for the scholarships. And for that, please go to my YouTube channel. I have multiple videos about scholarships. I actually have a full playlist about this stuff <laughs> on my channel. So if you go to, <coughs> excuse me, having a bit of bit of a cough here. If you go to my channel, YouTube channel, and go to the channel page, and then go down, 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 go to this playlist, Tuition Fees and Scholarships in Finland. I explain everything that you need to know about scholarships in this video, university scholarships for international students in Finland. Please check out this video. You will learn so much from it. Uh, and then Google or go to university websites to check out the scholarships there. <laughs> then the next question from the form and just reminding everyone, if you want to be sure that your question is answered, please ask your question in the Google form. There is a link in the description box below. <laughs> the reason why I do it this way is it's very difficult for me. M. Dobri, what's up? Welcome to the, st to the stream. 
it's very difficult for me to answer uh, keep an eye out on the chat while I'm answering questions. So if you ask your question in the chat, it is highly likely that I will miss that question. So if you want to be sure that I will be, uh, uh, I will answer your question during the stream live, please post your question into the Google form, which is linked below. <laughs> Talking of which, the next question from the form comes from Srivatsa, who comes from India. And uh, Srivatsa is, uh, has not yet decided whether or not he wants to study in Finland, but is interested uh, in doing a master's in Aalto University, uh, in at Aalto University in fashion design. Excellent choice. Aalto University is actually one of the best universities in the world in terms of fashion. <laughs> actually, the question is, is Finland good for fashion design related, related studies? Where are the job opportunities after completing our course? <laughs> there are multiple job opportunities in Finland, but of course you can also work anywhere abroad. It's actually funny that you ask about this because Aalto University, if I go to Aalto University, rankings this is actually quite funny <laughs> google all the university rankings uh you might not think about this but if you go and check out <laughs> arts and design in the field of arts and design in the qs uh qs uh, uh field specific rankings all the university ranks of course number one in finland number one in, in nordics fourth in europe and seventh in the world in the field of arts and design. So Aalto University is literally one of the best universities in the world in arts and design. This also means that it's not easy to get into the master's program that they have, but if you get there and you graduate from the arts and design school of arts and design, <laughs> uh, you will have a very good you will have very good job prospects because the the school is so well known in this field. Fun fact, actually, all the university students uh, in the School of Arts and Design have have won uh, international awards in uh, design, uh, especially in fashion, multiple years row in, in, in some of the competitions they have went to in France. So that's, you know, uh, something to note. <laughs> Uh, Nick Gers, uh, welcome to the stream, asking, will you be streaming more this week? No, uh, I usually do these streams once a week, so everything every Thursday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern European time, so that's uh, the local time here in Helsinki. And uh, I do this once a year, once a week, uh, at least, you know, a couple of hours, sometimes all, all the way up to three hours. So if you still have time to hang out, hang out right now, uh, write your question into the Google form. And, uh, you know, I will hopefully get to your question this week. Anyway, the next question from the form comes from Rafael, who comes from Spain. And uh, Rafael is interested in doing a bachelor's in computer sciences. Not sure whether or not he wants to want come to do it, the degree in Finland, though. But he it, but is interested in the universities of Tampere, Turku and Oulu. Awesome. Great option. And the question is, what is the coronavirus situation in Finland like as far as a, as the European Union countries goes? Uh, it's one of the best, uh, we actually have one of the best situations, not only in, in the EU, but in the world altogether. We actually just today opened up restaurants almost completely. Uh, most uh, big, uh, big outdoor events are going to be arranged uh, at the end of summer. So I would say that if you want to, you know, live in a country during the COVID situation, Finland is absolutely one of the best countries to do it uh we are when you go outside when you go outside the only kind of big thing that you notice that is different from normal is that people wear masks when they go inside but when you're walking outside you know you go to the beach you go to to the gym uh, well there you would need to wear a mask but when you you know go running or or you know even if you go to a restaurant people people wear masks but you know nothing really is different from normal so we're actually doing really well vaccination vaccinations are going uh, going really well and we're actually starting to open up the country again because we're doing doing quite well <laughs> uh Shirvatsa, i actually just answered the question that you had so if you go back five minutes in the stream, uh, you will get my answer. Uh, the short answer is yes, Finland is actually one of the best countries in fashion design, especially all the university. It's actually ranked uh, in the top 10 universities in the world when it comes to fashion design or uh, fashion studies. So absolutely, yes. Go back five minutes in the stream uh, where I, I, I go more in depth in this uh, question. <laughs> Anyway, the next question comes from Tarag Aziz, who comes from Bangladesh, and Tarag is 
applying to any university that has a master's in data sciences. So that's quite a lot of schools. And the question is, there's a couple of couple, couple of them. Number one, do Finnish people understand Russian language? No, most people in Finland or the clear majority in fi of Finnish people do not speak Russian. Uh, we speak uh, Finnish, English, and and uh, then a lot of people speak Fini uh, Swedish because Swedish is the second official language in Finland. Number one is Finland, uh, Finnish, and then Swedish. Uh, of course, everyone speaks good English here, uh, but no, people don't. Uh, un understand Russian. Uh, some schools that are on the eastern border, so on the Russian side of the the, the country, do learn Russian in school. <laughs> However, uh, you know, people who lear learn Russian, uh, Russia is is a very small amount of uh, you know the entire country. So, as a general rule of thumb, no Finns do not know or speak Russian. Then uh, the second question is: Do university studies? Are university studies free for EU citizens? Yes, they are indeed. Uh, university studies taught in English uh, on bachelor's and master's level are free of charge for European Union or European Economic Area citizens. I also do note that PhD studies in Finland do not have any kind of tuition fees, so they're in a, in a sense also free. Uh, however, you need to be able to finance your studies, uh, your PhD studies, so it's a bit of a different case altogether. Then the next question comes from Alex from the US. Alex, awesome to have you here again. Welcome. Uh, it's pretty early in the US, I think. Uh, I think you were, uh, Alex, if I if I was correct, were you from New York, if I remember correctly? Uh, I, unless I, I mix you with, with another person. <laughs> Anyway, uh, Alex is applying to study a master's in information technology. And the question is, is it true that admission for master's in universities and universities of applied sciences is getting more competitive recently? Good question. I have not heard of this. Um, the, the the one thing that I would say that the o only thing where I have heard of this, uh, this kind of a trend is in specifically in the Finnish language uh, programs. Uh, <laughs> the reason is that the, the application system for the Finnish language programs uh, that Finnish people apply to. Uh, the, the system changed a couple of, couple of years ago and uh, we have they put more emphasis on high school final grades while prior prior to the change we uh, we had a lot of emphasis on in on a, on, on a very rigorous entrance exam. So that's one of the reasons why the competition on uh, the spots for the Finnish language programs has in increased. However, whether or not the competition into the degrees in English taught programs is has grown. I haven't heard of any kind of a trend like this. However, maybe, 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 I, I, I'm not sure. I can't say for sure because, all right, Alex, let's, let's, let's put it this way. I have not heard or read about this kind of a trend anywhere. <laughs> Uh, of course, I might be mistaken or I, I simply haven't been looking in the, <laughs> into the right sources. I would not be worried if I were you. It's not going to be a problem. Then the next question comes from Ayman, who comes from or, uh, who comes from Algeria and is starting school this semester at the University of Eastern Finland, doing uh, doing his master's in IT. And the question is, what is the best mobile data plan in Finland? What is the price and speed? And what about home internet? So actually, that's a good question, and uh, this actually actually applies for everyone. What I would recommend you guys to do is. Uh, let's see. Uh, I, I just need to pull this out, out <laughs> really quickly. Mm. So what I would recommend you to do is, first of all, there are student discounts for uh, phone plans <laughs> or mobile plans. So what I would recommend you to do first is to go to frank.fi forward slash en and get yourself a student card. Uh, if you have not heard about this before, student cards are basically a must in Finland uh, because you get a lot of different discounts with a student card because it's basically your student ID. Uh, and for example, you are entitled to um, at minimum 40% discounts on public transportation, you know, discounts in food, at, especially at the campus, discounts in, in different kind of stuff. And go to Frank, it's one of the biggest uh, providers for student cards, not sponsored. And go to discounts at the top and then go to <laughs> go to go to go to check out more dis uh, discounts and then uh, go to uh, phone, for example, and you can see, for example, DNA has, it's one of the, uh, DNA, Telia are both, for example, uh, phone um, plan providers, and uh, you can actually get a phone subscription, so that's uh, unlimited, so it's, for some reason, it's the name of the 
subscription plan is, is in Finnish. So unlimited 4G internet in Finland, the Nordic countries and the Baltics at a maximum speed of 200 megabits a second. So that's really nice. Unlimited text and calls, internet in the EU uh, and a European economic area, uh, you can European economic area countries for 20 gigabytes per month. However, in Finland, that's unlimited. Um, and that's 1990 per month. That's nothing. That's super cheap. So in Finland, internet um, uh, subscriptions, especially and, and phone subscriptions are extremely cheap. And I would recommend that you you don't have to go with Telia per se, but most subscri uh, phone, most of the uh, internet providers are also phone providers. So and, and, and the, the prices are extremely competitive. So usually if you go, go to another provider, um, they they are they have packages that are basically the same price, so it doesn't really matter which provider you choose. But these are super super uh, cheap. <coughs> so again, once again, uh, go to Frank. Oops, sorry. Uh, if I kind of track myself back, go to Frank. Frank dot fi forward slash slash en. Go to discounts. Go to uh, show all discounts. Then look for phone press enter and you can find different uh subscription deals here uh moi is one dna is one telia is one everything else is uh just uh, accessories for your phones yeah <laughs> so go ahead and check those out <coughs> uh for home home internet actually many student apartments have ho uh, you know high speed uh internet included in the rent if if it's if that's not the case for you. Uh, you know, you can get a super fast uh, high speed internet for 20 euros per month uh, to your home. So that's absolutely not a problem. Uh, also, the same providers that you would buy the, the phone uh, subscription slash internet sub sub subscription from. So take that into account. Um, cool. The next question in the form comes from Kiral, who comes from India, uh, Indonesia, I think, or India, sorry, sorry, India. And uh, he's applying to the Hame University of Applied Sciences, doing a bachelor's in information technology. And the question is, I'm thinking about applying in computer applications. Is, is that the best course for getting uh, a good job in IT? Please answer this. Absolutely no way to you, uh, for me to say it, it's, well, Hame, if you want to have the absolute best you know, degree in the in, in Finland in IT, Hame University of Applied Sciences is not it. Um, you would need to go, ap apply for a university degree um, so that you would do both your bachelor's and master's. However, Hame is a perfectly good school if you just want to do a bachelor's. <laughs> uh, but it's impossible for me to say what the best school is for IT because it's not about the school. Finnish employers do, do not care what school you go to. They only care about whether what you can do and whether you're you know, good in what you do in your job. So it doesn't matter what school you go to, get uh, get good grades, learn how to how to do what you want to do in, in work, get work experience um, before you graduate and, and you should be fine. Uh, in Finland, we have a huge demand for talented IT uh, uh, people in in uh, talented people in the IT sector. So developers, AI, data scientists, etc. However, just having the degree will not help you at all. You also need to be able to, you know, be good at what you do. This is always the same thing that I, I mentioned. <sighs> Let's see. The next question comes from Kanishka from India. And Kanishka has not yet decided whether or not he wants to study in Finland. Uh, she wants to study in Finland, but is interested in doing her bachelor's in business studies. And the question is, is there any scope for undergrads for getting scholarships in Finland with a good academic score? If you apply for an English language uh, uh, degree, a bachelor's degree in business, there are scholarships available. However, do note that there are not enough scholarships for everyone. So they are, they are competitive and they are usually based on your SAT scores. Uh, when you apply for bachelor's in bachelor's degrees in business specifically for all other degrees, it depends on the degree. <laughs> However, if you apply for a bachelor's in business studies, the whether or not you will be able to get a scholarship depends on your SAT scores, your high school grades. Uh, if you if you need to write a motivation letter, then your motivation letter is also assessed. Uh, and then if you need to do a language proficiency test, uh, that's also assessed as well. So there's multiple things that you need to take into account. But yes, if you want to get a bachelor's degree in business, there are scholarships available, but the scholarships and how to apply for them depends on the school itself. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, actually, Dobre, uh, M. Dobre saying it's too bad in North America. It's less on what you do, what you can do, but where you went to school. Yeah, that's completely twisted. That's completely ins insane for me. <laughs> I, I, I've given, I usually give this, this, uh, you know, example in, in the streams when people ask about this. If you have do, two doc doctorates, one from Harvard and one from Yale, uh, and you have a, you have two master's degrees, but you are a comp uh, you are an complete a hole, and no one likes likes you, and no one wants to work with you. And you, for example, paid your way to school and you didn't really, you know, you don't know what you're doing. No one wants to hire you. It doesn't matter where you go to school. It doesn't matter what kind of a degree you have. It only matters what you can do. Of course, of course, as a disclaimer here, when you apply for work, people do check your CV and, and look where you went to school and, you know, what kind of grades you got. But that's not the end all be all. That's basically just a first filter. <laughs> so if you have really bad grades and you have a lot of applicants who have really good grades, of course, you're not going to be uh, selected because, you know, the first impression that you get uh, when a recruiter looks at your CV and, for example, your grades, you know, it's of course, if you get a positive first impression, that's good. However, the final selection is not going to be done based on, okay, you, you went to this school, you went to this school, this is better, I'll, I'll choose you. No, it, people only care about your skills and your expertise and your experience. Having a degree in Finland, you have to remember that, that in Finland it is extremely normal or common for people to get their master's degrees. And so having just having a master's degree in Finland doesn't mean anything. It's not a thing. For example, in the US where, where college is, it's more no, co uh, common that you go to college and you get a bachelor's degree. And in, in the US, you, you know, having a master's degree is, is, is a thing. It's, it's a good thing. In Finland, if you go and say to someone, I have a master's. Cool. Oh, all right. I have two master's degrees. So what? Not, not really. I, I, no, one's, no one's going to be a douchebag like this, but, you know, Having a master's is, is completely normal in Finland. It's nothing special. So it's not about the degree. It's about your skill sets. <laughs> this also, uh, having, ha have to say here, have to say also, this is what also one of, one of the reasons why I also tell people not to focus on their studies, on learning a lot of stuff by heart, because no one really cares if you can, you know, quote a book on page 10, uh, you know, section two or paragraph two. No one cares. People only care whether or not you can apply that information and, and you know, uh, you know, bring value from that in information. So in Finland, you know, as another, you know, topic in Finland, university exams are pretty applicable. They're pretty applied. So when you have uh, if you have a class that has, has 300 people, then, of course, you, you will have multiple choice questions in your exams. However, most of the exams, if you go to classes that have, have like 10, 30 people, they're not going to be multiple choice. They're going to be essays. They're going to be math problems. So, so, so you basically need to be able to apply the information that you learn. So just take this into account. The same goes to your job, uh, you know, wor uh, work as well. No one cares if you can cite a book from page two, pa section two or paragraph two. No one cares. Literally no one cares. We only care about your expertise and, and experience. Sorry, ranting. Uh, I just, you know, people people think that the the school that they, they go to and the, the degree, the name of the de degree that they do has, has some, you know, impact. It doesn't. So I'm just trying to, you know, communicate that here. Anyway, the next question uh, from the form comes from <laughs> uh, Delina, who comes from Sri Lanka. And uh, Delina is has not de yet decided whether or not he wants to study in Finland, but is interested in a master's in finance. Very good. And the question is, what about the job opportunities that related that are related in the field of finance? Very good. Uh, finance, uh, the financial industry, you know, banking, private equity, uh, even, you know, management consulting, uh, banking, whatever. It, it's very, very big. Uh, there's a huge demand for for people who are really good at this stuff. So if you do a master's in finance, finance in Finland, you will have very good uh, career prospects. The cool thing also is that many of the jobs in fin uh, finance, unless you go to direct customer service, <laughs> uh, don't require uh, Finnish language skills. So definitely recommend finance for anyone wanting to do, wanting to do a, a degree, business degree in Finland in English. Then the next question comes from uh, Yuan Yang, uh, Yuan Yao Fong, uh, Yuan, Yuan Yao Wong. Uh, I, I do apologize. I'm probably butchering your name. Yuan Zhao is it is it Juan? Is it is is the is the Y pronounced like a J or is it is it is it a Y? 
uh, Huen Huen Hua Huen Yuan Yao Wong or Huen 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 Hua Yu, Huen Hua Wong. Is that even close to being? I'm sorry for kind of testing it, it around, but uh, let me know in the chat how to pr pronounce your name if I even got close. Um, anyway, uh, Huen, Huen is uh, from Hong Kong, which is very cool, and uh, applying to uh, the Laura University of Applied Sciences to do a degree in business management. Very nice. And the question is, <laughs> I'm going to be an exchange student. Very good. Cool. In the next semester in Finland, which SIM cards are suitable and good for the exchange students uh, studying in Finland? Great. Great question. Actually, if you saw the uh, saw my answer previously, where I showed uh, showed the subscription uh, phone subscriptions plans, phone subscription plans uh, for students, usually these uh, phone companies will not give you those plans if you are an exchange student because you will not be in Finland for a long time. <coughs> so usually, when you are an exchange student in Finland, you need to get a prepaid card. Uh, usually, not always, but usually, uh, simply because uh, whoops. Sorry guys, just a second. Battery died. <laughs> Whoopsie, sorry, sorry about that. There you go. <laughs> Uh, what was I saying? Uh, yeah, so usually you need to get a prepaid card, but not always, but the same providers apply. And the cool thing is that you can usually get these prepaid cards from any shopping center uh, or even even maybe at the airport. So when you come to Finland, go to the closest shopping center um, and uh, they usually have salespeople there. Tell them that you're you're an exchange student, you want a, you know, good uh, unlimited internet access phone subscription. Uh, would you be able to get a subscription or do you need to get a prepaid card? and they will be able to guide you uh, and there's multiple <coughs> every single uh, shopping center in Finland usually has multiple shops where you have these different companies um, selling their subscriptions or prepaid cards so so it should be pretty easy there is not really a sim card that I would recommend per se because they're basically all the same it just uh, uh, you just you know need to find a company uh, that sells them again any any major so shopping center in any city And Dobry saying, how ironic battery dies when talking about cards. <laughs> yep, yep. I really need to get this kind of um, uh, charger that, that you, you, you uh, can give constant power to the camera uh, because this, this happens too often. <clears throat> yeah, thank you for the iro irony. <laughs> That's very true. Anyways, um, the next question comes from uh, Harini from Sri Lanka again. And uh, the question is, hey, over. I received uh, the letter of acceptance from the University of Tampere. And uh, after accepting the offer, I applied for a residence permit. There's an issue for us to submit biometrics in the closest embassy to us in India. Because of the pandemic, uh, the embassy is closed. As you said, I applied for accommodation earlier and received an offer from Ho TOAS. But they asked me to accept, it to, um, to, it, uh, to accept it as soon as possible if I want that offer. Because of the residence permit issue, do you think that it's worth uh, to accept it? Uh, right now because I can't be sure whether I will be able to come to Finland in August 2021 yeah great question uh, so my recommendation is uh, if 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 you were to ask simply me you know a yes or no question I would say no just cancel it <laughs> and and apply for a new apartment when you actually know that you're able to get your biometrics uh, simply because it's not worth paying for the rent <laughs> for months and months on end uh, for having an empty, empty apartment there. Uh, th take into account that, uh, you know, apartments do empty, you know, around the year because some people graduate and we have graduation dates basically once per month. So people move out every single month, mo new people move in. Uh, some people simply just, you know, buy their own apartment and they move out, move out from their student apartment. So it's not necessarily about um, so the question is not necessarily uh, sh if I'm not able to find an apartment in August, can I find anything at all? Rather, it's it's simply that you should be you should apply early once you know when you ca are able to come to Finland. So, for example, if you if you learn uh, in August that you're able to come to Finland after Christmas, then apply right away when you actually know that. But at this point, I would uh, either 
First, contact TOAS, tell them about your situation and, uh, and ask them how do they deal with the situation right now. If they tell you to simply that you, you need to either accept it or uh, uh, decline it, then I would not uh, I would decline it right now and then apply again once you know uh, uh, when you're able to, to get the residence permit. So that, that would be, be my guidance at this point. Let's see, the next question comes from Tarag Aziz. And by the way, Phoenix, Phoenix memes, just letting you know that I, I'm answering the question from the Google form as I, as I have, you know, the graphic on the, on the screen. So I will not get to your question, you know, because you're asking it all the time. Please ask the questions in the Google form. Uh, so that's, that's the way how this works because it's easier for me to, you know, get the questions in that way. Um, so, you know, there you know have to say this out loud the next question comes from from the form comes from Tara Gaziz, who comes from Bangladesh and the question there's a couple of questions here number one do any part-time jobs um, I'm sorry do any part-time master's study options in Finland um, are there any part-time master's degree study options in Finland if I find a full-time job <laughs> No, there is not no no part-time master studies. You basically need to be able to schedule your studies yourself. <laughs> you can study as much as you want as long as you just pass your courses. There is no number of hours that you need to study. It's all about yourself. Uh, however, I do warn you that many many uh, uh, many degrees do have a lot of mandatory classes. So if you have a full-time job, you will most likely not be able to study a master's. At, it, at the pace that you are required to do. So please take this into account. Also do note that since you come from Bangladesh, <coughs> you are only allowed to work 25 hours per week uh, during your, uh, when you have a residence permit for, uh, for your studies in Finland. So you actually cannot work full time in Finland if you come to study here, unless you are, uh, this, is a dif this is different for EU residents or citizens. But since you come from Bangladesh, if you come to study, if you come to Finland on a study residence permit or study visa, you are not allowed to work full time, period. That's just the rules. So, no. <laughs> then uh, after completing my master's in data sciences in, in Finland, will I get a full time job in football coaching, which is not my study field? Will I get a work per permit in, fin uh, in Finland? Oh, all right. So after completing my master's in data sciences and if I get a full time job working as a fo football coach, uh, which is not my study field, will I get a permit to live in Finland? Depends on how much they actually pay for the, the job. So it's not about, uh, you don't have to find a, uh, a job in your field of study. Rather, you need to simply be able to get enough money from your job to be able to live in Finland uh, without being uh, require, um, uh, without having to re require, I'm sorry, without having to uh, use the social services that we have in Finland. So it doesn't really matter what the job is as long as as long as it pays enough for you to live in Finland and pay for your own living costs. <laughs> Phoenix Phoenix memes once again I'm going through the questions in the form one by one in the order that they came in. Please be patient. There's a lot of other questions here from other people. Pushing and pandering will not work and and sometimes I even ban people if they you know, ask the question too many times in the chat. I'm going through this as fast as I can. Um, and please be patient. I will get to your question in time. But there's a lot of other people who also ask their questions in the form. And if you want your uh, question to be answered as fast as possible, please join this, uh, the stream every week as early as possible. Because the earlier you get your question in, the faster I will get to answer it. I will, go I will go through this one by one in the order that they came in. And I don't skip any questions on there, uh, un unless they're, you know, something nasty or, you know, there. Just, you know, mentioning that. Anyways, the next questions, ne next question comes from Nicholas from Malta. And Nicholas is starting school this semester at the University of Helsinki, studying his master's in ecology and evolutionary biology. <laughs> And uh, the question is, I have gotten my Hoas apartment. Is there anything else I can prepare before arriving there? Yes. First of all, here is a great example of someone who has actually done his work and prepared early. So Nicholas has applied for his student apartment early and it's, uh, it's almost July or well, well, it's 24th of June and he has already off, uh, gotten an offer, offer from Hoas. So that's one of the biggest things already done because the student apartment is, is one of the biggest things that you need to do when you actually come to move to uh, come to Finland. So well done. 
Nicholas, you have done things early. Now, next, what I recommend you to do is to go up to my YouTube channel, and uh, I have a video about this topic. And uh, if you go to the channel, again, if I show the screen, and uh, you look for before in the uh, again in the uh, search here, and then I have the video here: ten things to do before you travel to Finland for your studies. Check out this video. I have multiple things uh, laid out here. For example, what kind of apps, mobile apps, you should uh, download to your phone before coming here. <laughs> for example, we have a really good mobile app for first responders. So if you get in trouble, you don't have to you don't have to remember the uh, the emergency number, which is by the way one one two. It should be the same throughout Europe, uh, the European Union. But you have an app for that. You just one press, and and that will give the emergency response, your actual live location, etc. So check out this video. It has a lot of uh, stuff here. Then I would recommend that you actually, you know, check my video and Alex's, uh, Alex's videos about, you know, things to know about Finns and Finland before moving to Finland and kind of, you know, trying to get, uh, starting to get to know the Finnish culture, etc. So I think those are the things that you should do next. And now, uh, you know, if you have all of those done, when you have all of uh, all of those done, I would say you know try to save as much money as possible so that you, you you know you can have as much fun in Finland as possible, especially now that the student parties open up again <laughs> this this semester. Uh, people are going to have a lot of fun because they missed all parties last year, and so that you 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 might be able to travel as as well. And then of course you know start learning some basic day to day Finnish like you know, introducing yourself, um, you know, asking for directions, you know, uh, for a cup of coffee, saying thanks, hello, hello, etc. I think those are, you know, the kind of things that uh, I would uh, start preparing with before coming here. But again, well done. You have already done a lot of stuff really, really early. That's that's awesome. Uh, Tui on Dean asking in the chat, uh, super quick question here. Uh, this is uh, very easy to answer. Uh, so how do you apply to all the university scholarships? There's two types of sco scholarships that you can apply for. Uh, the biggest scholarships uh, you apply for using the same application form that you use to apply to the university itself. <laughs> If you apply to the university and you forget to apply for the scholarship with the form, you cannot anymore apply for the scholarship afterwards. Pre please remember that. Also, uh, to we, uh, there I have multiple videos on the uh, two uh, to one. I have multiple multiple videos on the channel about scholarships, and I go very deep into the process, what to do, when to do, how to find more information. So please check out those videos on my channel. Uh, if you go to the channel page again, if I show this to you in practice. <laughs> Uh, so that you can actually find them. If you go to my channel here, go down, 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 I, and I have a playlist here uh, talking about tuition fees and scholarships in Finland. Please check out this playlist in its entirety. I have everything that you need to know about uh, scholarships in that playlist right there. Cool. Um, then the next question from the forum comes from Tung. Uh, you can call me by my English name, Steve. Hello, Steve. Uh, so Steve comes from Vietnam, is still in high school, uh, but is as, uh, interested in applying for a bachelor's in computer sciences at Aldo University. Awesome. And the question is, can I use my SAT results for application? And what about the SAT subject tests? I saw it in the requirements, but SAT subject tests are discontinued. I'm confused. Great, great question. So the situation what uh, Steve is talking about here is that um, the SAT subject tests are discontinued. They are no longer uh, being done. Uh, and uh, previously, uh, uh, up, up, up and until last year, universities, many universities in Finland, including all the university, required the SAT subject test for their bachelor's degree applications. However, this is not going to be the case this year simply because it's not low, low, uh, it's no longer available. So, you know, they have to change the, the SAT requirements from Aalto University's behalf. The thing is that the uh, application requirements for uh, the upcoming application round, which starts in December 2020, uh, the information for or the, the requirement for the applications is not publicized yet. So... <laughs> Uh, you have to wait until most likely uh, October-ish or September-ish um, 
for Aalto University and all, all the other universities in Finland to up, update their uh, application uh, requirements. Uh, the, the thing is that I don't have this information. Uh, most of the school uh, employees don't have the, this information. And even if you send them an email about this, they will not answer you because they are not allowed to give you any information that is not already public. <laughs> so you simply have to wait until most likely uh, October, September, October, when uh, the university updates their application website. So that's the situation right now. Um, Amar Kandamar saying in the chat, thank you very much for the, the live session. It was very helpful. You're most welcome. And uh, of course, Tsidarark uh, uh, also saying uh, thank you very much. Uh, that was helpful. And Tarak saying thanks, Oliver. Uh, thank you very much, guys, for hanging out. And of course, uh, you know, I'll have a quick drink. And while I'm doing that, of course, if you guys could uh, gently tap the like button for the YouTube algorithm gods, that would be highly helpful. Uh, that tells YouTube that you're actually getting some value out of the stream and that would help uh, the channel grow in the future as well. Uh, anyway, quick drink and then jumping into the next question. Hmm. That's nice. All right, awesome. Anyways, uh, actually, before I jump into the next question, super quick thing, a uh, couple of, you know, uh, plugging myself super fast. Uh, so if you are interested in, in job hunting in Finland and, and you want to learn uh, how and where to find jobs in Finland uh, during your studies, um, I'm actually working uh, on a comprehensive, you know, course on, you know, job hunting in Finland 101. And the idea of the course is to give you all the information that you need to speed up your job hunting process so that you don't have to, you know, uh, learn everything <laughs> from zero. Uh, I'm actually working on the course with an old colleague of mine who has more than 10 years of experience working as a recruiter and as a manager in a, a recruitment company. So there's going to be a lot of super valuable information in the course. Uh, it's very comprehensive and that's why it's it's going to be in a paid course format. Uh, it's just too much material to put on YouTube for, for free, unfortunately. Uh, the course is not yet publicized, but if you want to be the first one to know about the course and the pricing, the pricing of the course, uh, there's a link in the chat right now and you can sign up for a waiting list. Uh, that's just for an email list. It, it, you don't have to... Uh, buy anything if you if you jump on the email list I will just those will be the pr first people to know more about the course and the pricing so just you know letting you know about that anyways the next question comes from my uh, uh, the next qu question comes from Himanshu who comes from India and uh, Himanshu is coming to Finland for work work not for school and uh, Himanshu is an IT cloud engineer very nice <laughs> And the question is, hi, how is the cloud engineering scopes in Finland? Impossible to say, once again, very difficult to say, uh, you know, you can do basically whatever you, anything that you can work on in the US or UK or Canada or Germany or India as a cloud engineer, you can do the same, you know, jobs in Finland as well. There's a lot of really big companies uh, that hire a lot of IT uh, or software developers, <laughs> cloud engineers. Uh, there's also a lot of really interesting startups. There's a lot of interesting growth companies that also do a lot of cloud computing. Uh, for example, we have a startup. Uh, I'm actually running a technology startup and we are actually building a cloud platform for data, data analysis. Uh, how we're, we're not hiring right now, but there's a bunch of companies in Finland <laughs> Uh, that are super interested in, in cloud uh, engineer or engineers uh, who are experienced in uh, cloud development specifically. Uh, so if you want to work in Finland in this field, absolutely, there's a lot of companies for that. However, getting a uh, work permit to Finland requires you to first find a company that would want to hire you so that you could actually then, uh, before you actually apply for a residence permit. Uh, however, if you want to study cloud computing in Finland, that's also very good. And there are multiple master's programs that you can ap uh, apply for. And uh, after graduating uh, from this field in Finland, you will have excellent career opportunities in this country afterwards. So absolutely, there's a huge demand for cloud engineers or cloud compu computing engineers in Finland. Um, the, the, the question is where to find the jobs. It's, it's not always easy to find the jobs, but there are a huge, huge demand. There is a huge demand for this kind of sk skill in Finland. Absolutely. Uh, anyway, the next question comes from Cherel from the Philippines and Cherel is applying to Metropolia, University of Applied Sciences, or the CAMP University of Applied Sciences in the city of Kajani. 
and uh, he is applying for a bachelor's in management or in finance. Excellent, excellent choices. And the question is, just want to ask, uh, ask about the chances of a third year international management degree holder from Kamk University of Applied Sciences <coughs> to, me, to, be, to be admitted a, to a business master's program, uh, preferably, be, preferably in economics or in finance at Aalto University in the future. Oh, right. Okay. So, so you want to know about your chances of getting into Aalto University in their master's programs in economics or finance. Uh, if you have graduated from Kunk, Kunk, um, uh with your bachelor's. Um, sure, uh, definitely, definitely it's possible, but you need to have really high grades in order to do this. <laughs> to be correctly, uh, to be quite frank, you need to have really high grades uh, or your GPA has to be really good. And you need to most likely also have some job experience, uh, uh, you know, accumulated and and when you apply to Alto you also need to for example uh, write a motivation letter uh, and you need to really focus on on kind of telling a story and and arguing why you would be a really good candidate for Alto however if you have not yet <coughs> applied and, and you can let me know in the in the chat uh, uh if you have not yet applied to school yet uh, but you're interested in doing a master's in Aalto, I would recommend that you should apply for a bachelor's in Aalto University as well. Don't go to, to do a degree in another school separately. The reason being that when you do um, when you graduate from Kung, Kung as a bachelor's, you then need to apply separately apply again to Aalto University to do a to do a master's. However, if you are admitted, if you apply for a bachelor's at Aalto University and you're admitted to do a bachelor's at Aalto University, you're automatically also admitted to do your master's and there's no separate application process for that. So basically, if you are an Aalto University student at a bachelor's level and when you graduate as a bachelor's, you can the second next day you can go to master's courses and already start your master's degree uh, studies. However, if you are a uh, student at Kamk University of Applied Sciences and you graduate uh, as bachelor's, then you need to wait for the application period for master's degrees, apply for a master's degree at Aalto University and then wait half, uh, wait half a year for to get the results. So if you want to do a master's degree, then apply directly to that university where you want to do the master's uh, because it's much easier for you in terms of the application processes. So there, <laughs> hopefully that, that helped. Anyway, the next question comes from Jean, uh, Jean Louis, who comes from the Philippines and Jean Louis is applying to the Tomk University of Applied Sciences doing a bachelor's in nursing. Awesome, that's that's really cool. And the question is, hi Oliver, I'm planning to take up nursing in Tomk. What is, when is the best time to start? Autumn or spring intakes and why? Thank you. So usually the uh, academic year in Finland starts in uh, autumn, in September, uh, or in your case, that would be starting uh, in late August. Uh, that's simply how it, how it is in Finland. Uh, the uh, the semester uh, academic year normally starts in in autumn however there are some programs that also start in uh, january however that's kind of more of an exception to the rule <laughs> so there's really no reason here to start in autumn other than the academic year starts in autumn unless there's an exception to this so uh, definitely apply for the autumn intake uh, that would be my my recommendation however if you have an option between autumn and spring i would still rec recommend autumn simply because the absolute majority of finnish uh, or students in finland start their academic year in autumn in august or september and that's when most of the student parties and activities take place so if you start school in uh, january you most likely miss well you will miss uh, all of the student activities and parties that happen during the first half of the first academic year and that's kind of the funniest that's the most fun time that you will have in school in terms in terms of parties and and so so the the you know that's definitely uh, a recommendation here uh amar khan amar saying admission completed in at the university of helsinki for my son awesome that is absolutely awesome First of all, congratulations to you both. Of course, more more so to your son. Um, uh, huge uh, applause. I don't have a button for for massive applause here. Uh, getting admitted to the University of Helsinki is definitely not easy. It's uh, especially depending well depending on the on the field. But it, you know, 
the University of fin uh, Helsinki is the best research university in Finland in basically every single field that they uh, teach. So definitely, definitely congratulations to your son. Uh, tap, tap him on the shoulder. Uh, that's a really, really, really big thing. And uh, uh, University of Finland is, is not only a great institution uh, in terms of the academics, but also they have the it's the oldest university in Finland and they have the longest amount of history, culture and, uh, for example, the student uh, students there uh, really hold the culture and the history and the stories really, uh, really close to their hearts. And they, it's just so much fun studying there. I haven't been there studying there, but I know a lot of friends who, who study there still. And uh, it, they have so many different fun things to do there while you're studying. So, again, huge congratulations to your son. And, and I'm happy to hear that my, the advice uh, have been helpful. So that's that actually that made my day. That's I'm very happy about that. <laughs> cool. Uh, Chedel saying actually in the chat, continuing the discussion that we just had. Hey, hey Oliver, I'm Chedel. And uh, I've not yet applied to Aalto University because I'm afraid that my average grades would not make it into Aalto bachelor's admission. Yeah, that's definitely, of course, a um, reason for concern. However, um, if you are able to raise your grades, uh, for your high school grades afterwards, that's, of course, great. Uh, but I would uh, that doesn't really matter because when you apply for bachelor's degrees, <laughs> Uh, you, you use something called a joint application. Basically, basically means it means that you can use the same application form. It's the same physical form or digital digital form that you would use to apply for multiple schools at the same time. I think with a joint application form, you can apply to six programs at the same time. So at that point, definitely include all the university as your number one choice, and then ha have Kamk or other schools as your, you know, second, fifth, fourth, sixth choices as well. So that if you're not getting admitted to Aalto, you can then revert back to the other options. However, I would definitely recommend that you apply for Aalto number one, uh, and then just make sure to work super hard for the rest of this year to make, make you know, get everything out of your current education, uh, get getting good, good grades, and making sure that you do really well in your SATs, study super hard for your SATs. Again, once you get to know what SAT subjects you need to do and then uh, work really hard on your um, other uh, tests that you might need to do or if you need to write a motivation letter. So do do your web, you know, um, do your best in order to 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 get admitted to Alto first, but then revert back to other options if, if uh, it's not possible. <laughs> Mali, uh, Malik Asar asking in the chat, do we get entitled to unemployment allowance for spouses right away right away when we reach uh, Finland? No, you do not. If you're not Finnish citizens or you do not and and or you don't work full time, you do not uh, get any kind of social security uh, from the Finnish government. Uh, you need to be either a Finnish national or in some cases, some European Union nationals might also get social benefits in Finland, but that's very rare. If you are, if you come from outside the EU, EU uh, you basically are not entitled to any kind of social security uh, uh, support uh, before you have a certain type of uh, residence permit. I don't remember the exact type of residence permit it is, and you need to also be working full time first. So no, you do not get any kind of uh, social insurance allowances from the Finnish government. And actually, uh, when you actually come to, to Finland, if your spouse wants to come to Finland as well, uh, they need to have financial resources to live in Finland uh, so that they will not be uh, so that they don't have to revert back to the social uh, social uh, security system, and if they are if they do not have the financial uh, funds to to live in Finland on their own, they will not be able to get a residence permit. So please take this into account uh, that you need to be able to live in Finland without uh, relying on the social security net. So there, good uh, important question though. <laughs> Thanks for asking. Anyway, the next question from the forum comes from uh, Sisira. Sorry, I'm, I'm going to butcher your name. It's really long. Sisira El Pitia. El, Sisira El Pitia uh, Witana. I hope that that's cl close enough. I'm sorry for uh, most likely butchering your name. Sisira El Pitia Witana. 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 Who comes from Sri Lanka <laughs> and uh, is applying to to study a bachelor's in sports sports in Helsinki, in any of the universities in Helsinki. And the question is, uh, what is the cost for one year to study uh, sports in Helsinki? <laughs> Absolutely no way for me to say for sure. You would need to actually point me to the correct program that you're applying to. <laughs> um, I don't know if there is a bachelor's degree in sports. 
and if there is there is no program that is just one one year uh of course there's the the tuition fees are you know they are something per year but there are no bachelor's degrees that are just for for one year uh plus then you would need to point out point out the exact program that you want to apply for there's no way for me to answer this other, this otherwise uh then the next question question from uh, sorry before I say this, the reason why I cannot say for sure because is because the scholarship or the cost of studying here depends on the school as well as the program that you're applying to. So, for example, if you apply to Aalto University, uh, which is one of the best universities in Finland, master's degree programs are a different price than bachelor's degree programs. However, if you apply to the University of Helsinki, which is, again, one of the best universities in Finland, the, the, price is different, the, the prices between master's degrees and bachelor's are different and the prices between the different bachelor's programs are also different. So take that into account as well. So again, I would need to know the exact program that you apply to. <laughs> then the next question comes from Marta, who comes from Italy. And Marta is applying to the University of Turku, doing her, her master's in uh, arts. Awesome. And uh, the question is how to create a... F how to get French... <laughs> How to how to get friends in in Finland with Finnish people specifically, and how to appro approach a guy uh, in, when if you're you know if you have a crush on them, and please don't say while drinking, uh, <laughs> uh, rolling on the floor laughing. <laughs> Thanks, Marta. Yeah, so that's actually a good question. So first of all, uh, well, of course, you know, approaching someone in in the romantic sense. Um, it, it takes time uh, with Finnish people. It, it's a lot of, usually it takes a lot of time to kind of build those relationships. Of course, if you are out, you know, you know, outside, for example, at a bar or, or a restaurant, then um, I, I would avoid doing any kind of super cliche uh, tricks or trying to hit, hit on them or, you know, anything like this. Um, just start a conversation. Uh, Finnish people, a lot of Finnish people, especially young younger generations, feel that, internationals who come to Finland are very exotic <laughs> in a sense and we really want to know about uh, your countries your the culture that you you guys have in your country and all, all everything that has to do with with you guys coming from abroad and then kind of comparing Finland to to other countries as well so I would actually start from there and uh, uh, especially you know in this kind of a romantic situation <laughs> uh, another thing is be as straight as possible be as honest as possible uh, you know, trying to be someone else will not help you at all. It's going to backfire really badly. And um, however, then then in terms of uh, friendships, uh, especially if you come to study in Finland, the best single way for you to uh, get friends in Finland <coughs> is to participate actively in different student activities. That means parties. You don't need to drink in Finland. There's no requirement for you to drink if you go to a party. Uh, people understand that. Actually, the amount of alcohol drunk um, is uh, used in in different student events is actually decreasing quite heavily and there's a lot of Finnish people Finnish students who don't drink any alcohol so it's absolutely no requirement and if if, if someone forces you or or tries to make you drink alcohol you can absolutely tell them go f yourself and i don't want to drink alcohol uh, there's absolutely no forcing drinking in finland and if, if there is that that needs to be uh, absolutely should not be tolerated um, and but however you know participating in the discuss uh, in this kind of student activities is a very important way for Finnish students to actually get to know each other and uh, that's that's usually where you know the b closest and, and longest friendships actually come from because you spend a lot of time together you know working on a lot of really cool stuff uh, building events for other people spending long evenings you know planning uh, events or or uh, you know, doing schoolwork uh, and stuff. So I, I'd say definitely that's that's the number one for you way for you to to uh, get Finnish friends, especially as a student. So don't just stay at your own place. You know, tugged away uh, behind the door. Go go to the university campus. Try to find information about local student uh, clubs and and organizations and and participate in their meeting open meetings and then try to kind of get in inside the clubs and and activities. So that's definitely for you to to take into account. <laughs> Uh, uh, Harry Lau saying that your spouse can go to the TE or which is um, to a, to a, 
Työtoimisto in Finnish. It's basically the unemployment office. Uh, and get support for language and job hunting. Search TE Office Finland spouse. That's actually interesting. I didn't know about that. That might be true. But um, in most cases, if you actually want to get a residence permit into Finland, then then you will need to be able to cover your own finances even while you're looking for a job. Uh, so just take that into account uh, as well. Uh, I might be wrong again. Of course, there's a lot of nuances here and there's a lot of details here. So just, you know, take this into account, uh, you know, in general. Anyway, the next question comes from Prince Abraham. Welcome, Prince Abraham, <laughs> uh, who comes from India and is applying to study at the University of Tampere to do a master's in marketing. And uh, the question is, hi, I'm a student with a B permit and my spouse working full time as a dependent. In case if her employer employer is ready to offer her a full time employment in that that scenario, uh, can she apply for a A level permit with that offer? Please advise. Uh, my honest answer here is an, I don't know. Uh, I am not a uh, immigration or residence permit expert, and I would recommend that you contact the Finnish Immigration Service about this for more details. Uh, I have gone through all of the material they have available on their website, <laughs> but uh, residence permits, uh, residence permit applications are always, always um, uh, processed on a on an individual basis. There are general rules, however, there are they are a bit vague. So I, I simply don't know. Uh, and since I'm not 100% sure, I will say I don't know so that I don't give you false information. Please contact the Finnish Immigration Service in this, uh, in, in terms of this topic. Uh, the next question comes from Milad Faselian, who comes from Iran. Uh, Iran. I'm not American. Uh, Milad Faselian, who comes from Iran. There you go. And uh, he is applying to do a to a PhD in blockchain, IT and programming. That's cool. All right, that's interesting. <laughs> kind of brain implosion. Uh, uh, that's that's super cool. Uh, anyway, the question: Hello, is doctoral education uh, an age priority? For example, is a per is a person over thirty years old less likely to be accepted to a Finnish university? Absolutely not. <laughs> there is absolutely no impact on your age you know, uh, on your uh, PhD application. However, do note that, of course, uh, your um, potential job experience in the field might have an impact on, have, might have a positive, or if you, if you don't have any experience, that might have a negative impact. If you do have some experience, that might have a positive impact. Uh, so this is kind of, of course, your job, the amount of experience you have is in, in direct correlation with your age. However, your age in itself does ha not have anything to do with your... <coughs> Uh, chances of getting into a PhD uh, program. Absolutely none. Uh, this goes to every single uh, degree taught in Finland. Your age doesn't matter. We don't care. We just want brilliant people to come to Finland to study and, and do their degrees and, you know, contribute into the society. So absolutely recommend that that you should look a bit more into the, the PhD programs, especially, uh, actually, I would recommend that you sh should check out the a PhD positions at Aalto University because they, it's the leading university in uh, uh, in uh, computer sciences, and uh, I'm sure that they might be interested in in uh, looking into blockchain. So so definitely check out the Aalto University PhD uh, op op opportunities. Uh, very super interesting, super super interesting. Anyway, moving on. The next question comes from uh, Kaka Utkarsh, who comes from India as well and is applying to. The University of Helsinki doing a master's in AI and machine learning. Very cool, very interesting. And the question is, if I will, if I come to Finland for study, can, uh, and if I work, can I get a permanent residency in Finland? So uh, yes, you can get a permanent residency in Finland after you have done your degree in here and after you have worked uh, for a couple of years full time in Finland. So you need to first get your degree and then work for a couple of years in Finland full time and then you can apply for a permanent residency. Uh, I don't remember exactly what the number of years was uh, for before you can apply for a permanent residency. I think it was between two or four. So it's actually not that much. Uh, so uh, absolutely, yes, doing a degree and, and getting a job in Finland is absolutely a way for you to get a permanent residency but it just takes a few years. Uh, Dev Milad, you're much, uh, you're welcome. Uh, hopefully you got some value out of this, uh, out of my answer. Uh, by the way, everyone, if you are getting some value out of the streams and you have not yet clicked the like button, I would highly appreciate if you would. Uh, that uh, gives a positive, a positive um, 
uh, that that's positive information for the YouTube gods and uh, that will put this live stream in front of more people. So I would, I would highly appreciate if you could gently tap the like button under the video. <laughs> the next question comes from the form and then after that I will jump for a moment into the chat. So if you have any questions that you would like me to answer in the chat, uh, I'm going to go through a few of them. Uh, write a Q in front of your question and then your question and uh, uh, then I will go through and pick out a couple of interesting questions in the chat and then I will come back into the form again. <clears throat> but yeah, if you have any questions that you would like me to answer, uh, write Q and then your question into the chat and I will pick a couple of them. And while waiting I'm answering uh, Gul Noor's question. And Gul, um, uh, Gul Noor uh, comes from, or, or actually, sorry, um, Gul, Gul Noor, uh, Gul Noor uh, comes from Germany. I'm actually not sure how to pronounce your name in German. Um, that's uh, Alexei Gul Noor. Uh, Gul Noor? Um, it's the, the it's it, difficult because the R is at the end of uh, at the end of your name, so I don't actually know how to pronounce your name properly. Uh, actually, funny fun fact: I used to study German for over ten years. I don't speak almost any German anymore because I can't use it anywhere. Uh, I don't have any German friends or no, you know who, who I would be speaking with you know every day. <laughs> so I've I've lost the entire language, which is really a shame. Anyway, uh, Gulnur comes from Germany and she is starting school this semester at the Aalto University doing her master's in something, uh, didn't write here. And the question is, is there a plan on how to rent an apartment from the outside? Uh, many want a deposit beforehand and can I trust a contract? Unfortunately, I can't take a closer look at the apartment. Depends on the apartment provider. <laughs> so, uh, so Gulnur, if you could please, if you're still alive, please let me know in the chat really quickly. Uh, what, uh, from where are you actually getting the uh, offers from? Have you applied for Hoas apartments and ha have you ap applied for uh, AYY apartments? Those would be my number two, number one and number two recommendations for you. Do not apply for private uh, market apartments unless you have to. Prioritize student apartments first. In, ter in terms of student apartments, yes, you can absolutely trust HOAS and AYY in terms of their contracts, as well as all other official student apartment providers in Finland. They're very, they have long histories, they are very, very well established, and they, they are uh, also very trustworthy. So absolutely, you can uh, uh, trust the contracts. Um, and... Um, uh, yes, every single uh, uh, apartment provider in Finland will want you to uh, pay a deposit beforehand. Uh, that is pretty standard in Finland. And uh, just make sure that it's a direct bank-to-bank -bank, uh, deposit. Not a, no, nothing uh, in Finland is done via, uh, for example, um, Western Bank or Western Union. Not, uh, never transfer, transfer money in Finland through Western Union or something like this. We always, 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 always and only do direct bank transfers um, because those can be uh, stopped if, if there is a scam for some reason. All right, let's see, let's see. Um, any questions? So any questions in the chat? Uh, so Mo, Mo, Mo Yuo has, hi, I'm studying in university in Meknes, but I want to go to Finland, but I don't know what information for, uh, but I don't know anything about it. What kind of information for studying in Finland? And uh, uh, I'm studying application sciences. All right, so Mo, you are, you are very early in, in this process of, of actually applying to study in Finland. Uh, it's a very broad topic, so I don't want to go too deep into this. What I would recommend you to do is to first subscribe to the channel for future videos. I talk about this topic, these topics every single week. <laughs> and secondly, go, start going through the videos that I have on my channel. So what I would do in your case is, since you are, again, clearly you need a lot of information, please go to my channel after the stream and start going through this playlist right here. I have a lot of videos on this playlist about the basic stuff like tuition fees, scholarships, <laughs> reasons to study in Finland, how to apply to study in Finland, where to find the right universities for you in Finland, etc. So start going through these videos one by one and learning how to actually apply to study in Finland. That's way more efficient for you than than trying to ask uh, for, for me to answer this question in the stream live stream because it's just too way, uh, wide of a question or topic to, to talk about in, in 
here live. So start going through the videos in the in the channel. And if you have any questions after watching the videos, please leave a comment, a question in the comments. I try to get back to every single comment on my channel uh, as soon as possible. So, you know, take that into account. <laughs> Then uh, Kabir Dave has hi, uh, a question. Hi, I want to study film and television in Finland. Are there good opportunities in the arts field? So uh, it's very difficult for me to say whether or not there are opportunities in the film and television industry. I do know that it's it's in a lot of trouble globally because Netflix, uh, you know, Hulu, uh, Disney Plus, etc. They are taking market space, market uh, away from television, <laughs> and uh, um, so. I know that the other university school of arts and design has a very good program in this field. However, I cannot really comment on the job opportunities because this is just something that I have not gotten used to or I have not looked into. However, if I if I were you, I would simply Google Alto University, so A A L T O Alto University um, Film and Television or Masters Film Television and look into their program, and they might have some information about career opportunities for the future. Uh, then, uh, Niguet has a question. Hi, I'm f I finished my bachelor's almost eight years ago. Am I too old to apply to a for a master's? Absolutely not. Fini Finnish universities do not care about your age when you apply. Plus, Finnish employers, Finnish people don't, do not care about your age when you study at a university. Absolutely not. Go ahead and start uh, looking into more information about studying in Finland. I highly recommend that you apply if you are interested in doing a master's degree. Finland is a very good country for that. So absolutely no, no reason for you not to apply to study in Finland, even if you have done your bachelor's alre already a while ago. <laughs> um, then let's take one more uh, Pankai, uh, Pankai Chao, uh, Chao, Chao Han uh, asks, Hello, I'm watching your videos now. Finish, don't start working remotely in my country due to... All oh, right, so... Uh, let's see, no, now Finish, don't start work real, remotely in my country due to COVID-19. Right, so there's a lot of issues with, for example, the biometrics, uh, if, you, if you need to get them to the embassies in, in many countries, especially in India right now. And that's just something that we cannot do anything about uh, because the, the embassies work the way that they do. And unfortunately, many of the uh, embassies and many, many of these processes have slowed down due to the pandemic. That's simply something that we cannot do anything about. <laughs> uh, uh Aditya asking how to know about scholarships. Uh, first, watch my videos on scholarships on my channel. I have multiple videos on this topic. I You will learn most of the general information that you need to learn from those videos, then go to different university, uh, look for the university that you want to study in, and then uh, Google that university name and then scholarship. Each university in Finland has their own scholarship programs and uh, the, the type of scholarship, how large the scholarships are, how, how to apply for them, who can apply for them, etc. All of this depends on the university and the university program that you're applying to. So please check out the university websites for this information. Uh, then Gulnur saying, uh, mess is, all right, so it's called uh, Gulnua. Uh, right, all right, Gulnua. It's a Turkish name. Oh, that explains. Cool. So Gulnua, uh, and I'm studying industrial engineering and innovation. I have applied for AIY and HOAS, but I haven't received any answers yet. Thanks for your help. Yeah, awesome. So first of all, engineering and innovation, very very in interesting, or industrial engineering and in innovation, super inter interesting. I actually, if you want to, um, uh, and if someone currently live, uh, has not yet uh, joined our Discord server, please do. Uh, we are basically building a community of people interested in studying and working in Finland. And uh, Gulnua, if you're interested, join the server and actually send me a DM. Uh, I would love to have a cup of coffee, coffee when the semester starts because the program sounds really interesting and I would like to learn more about the program and, and your future plans. So <laughs> there. Cool. The next question from the form. Let's jump back into the form. Comes from Linta, uh, who, com who comes from India, and uh, Linta is has not decided whether or not she wants to study in Finland, but is interested in a master's in social work. And the question is: If I am a student with a B permit, um, my underage son can he study in Finland for free, especially in English school? Please advise. I don't know. This is a thing that this is a topic that I unfortunately don't know anything about. Uh, this is all about residence permit and immigration, and I'm not an expert in this topic. Uh, so what I would recommend you to do is to contact the Finnish Immigration Service. 
just Google Finnish Immigration Service and uh, contact their customer service about this topic. They should be able to give you an answer pretty fast, fast because this is a very simple topic for them to answer. I simply haven't looked into this question and I don't know. That's my that, unfortunately, unfortunately, that's my answer here. I simply don't know. Um, Amine Rashid asking, what's the resume resume or CV format in Finland? This is a very complicated topic and I recommend that if you're interested in this topic, I have a job hunting course coming up where I go through everything that you need to know about studying and uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, applying for work in Finland. If you're interested in learning the, the kind of intricate details about what, when to, when, how and where to apply for work in Finland, how to do a good CV, how to, to write a good application letter or motivation letter, uh, you know, how to negotiate your salary. I recommend that you join the waiting list for the course. It's There's a link in the, in the chat right now. Uh, the course is going to be paid. I don't yet know how, how expensive it's going to be, but by going, uh, submitting yourself into the uh, submitting your information into the waiting list, you will uh, be the first one to learn more about the course, the prices and early bird discounts. So there. Uh, Jed Gotti, what's up, my man? Welcome to the stream. Uh, hopefully you're doing awesome. <laughs> All right, then the next question comes from uh, Kiral from India, uh, who is applying to the HAME, University of Applied Sciences, doing a bachelor's in IT. <laughs> and the question is, Oliver, please suggest me some good courses like Java or Python. Uh, there's no uh, there's no university programs just in Java or Python. There are computer science programs that where you you will learn Java and Python, but they're not just about Java and Python. Uh, university degrees in Finland are way more broad than that, so you will learn much much more. Uh, for example, if you have a program in uh, computer sciences at the Hame University of Applied Sciences, I'm sure that it's it's great. Uh, I would also recommend that you check out the university. Uh, Aalto University and their uh, bachelor's programs in, uh, in in the in the field, great as well. Uh, there is also a computer science program at uh, Metropolia University of Applied Sciences, as well as in multiple other universities that I don't remember just now, um, you know, out of the top of my head. Uh, uh, then uh, guide me to get a good job in IT. Again, if you want to learn about finding a job in Finland, and uh, regardless of your field, I recommend that you sign up for the waiting list for my job hunting course. This is way too complicated of a topic for me to talk about in the live stream. The course is going to contain more than five hours of material, <laughs> of more than five hours of material and video, you know, videos. Uh, where I talk about all the, di the different things that you need to know about job hunting in Finland. In addition, it's going to have a lot of written material. Uh, I'm going to have an example CV, an example uh, job application letter. Uh, we are going to have a lot of links to different websites and companies that we would recommend you to use. So I recommend that you check out the, the uh, job hunting course when it uh, is published. Then uh, the... Uh, question, please tell me which of these schools are good. Metropolia University of Applied Sciences versus Hame University of Applied Sciences. Both are great schools. Um, I don't want to say that either of them is better. Uh, Metro the good thing about Metropolia is that it's in Helsinki, so in the capital. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. Uh, Hame is, is quite, quite, a bit, quite a bit further away from the capital. Uh, otherwise, both schools are great. Um, and then He's saying that in Google, it shows that Hammy University of Applied Science is better. I have no idea. Uh, I never look at rankings because rankings don't really tell you that much uh, for many different reasons. Uh, I would say that both schools are great. For example, my sister has done her degree in Metropolia University of Applied Sciences. My girlfriend actually is doing a second degree at uh, Metropolia. She has a she's she's doing her main degree at Aalto University, and uh, then she has a has a second degree from Metropolia. So that's a good school as well. So yeah, you know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Adich asking, do you know if there are any chatbot courses available in any of the universities? Absolutely no idea. I have never heard of this, but I would guess no. This is such a specific topic that I'm pretty sure that there's no courses specifically about chatbots. Uh, chatbots are such a narrow topic. Uh, university studies are way, 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 way broader. However, of course, if you do a degree in computer sciences, I'm pretty sure that you you can, you know, code a chatbot pretty easily. It's not going to be that difficult. <laughs> but no, there is not going to be specific courses on chatbots. It's way too nar narrow of a topic. Uh, Anyway, the next question comes from Farkas Fremont, who comes from co who comes from Hungary, and uh, he's starting school this semester at the U U.S. Gula University, doing his master's in sports sci uh, sports 
psychology. Very nice. And uh, the question is how to manage during quarantine, if quarantine will be necessary necessary in August. Uh, great question. Uh, basically, make sure that you um, uh, order food into your place. Uh, there's m multiple different ways to order food to your home. Uh, however, the best way for you to do that, in my personal opinion, this is not paid, is Vault. Vault has a very easy to use mobile app, which is free. And you can uh, order food from restaurants as well as grocery stores to your home delivered, which is great. Uh, that's, I think, the biggest thing that you need to take into account during your self-quarantine. <laughs> Otherwise, just, you know, uh, make, make sure that you have a Netflix account. <laughs> I guess that's that's one thing. Um, but yeah, food food delivery home for home services uh, is, is using Vault. That's the best way for you to do it. Then next question comes from Adam from France. Welcome back to the stream. Awesome to have you here again. <laughs> and Adam is applying for a uh, bachelor's at Aalto uh, University in economics. And he's saying, hi, hi Oliver, what's up? Uh, do you know what the percentage of, per percentage of Finnish students in the international programs? Uh, do you know what is the percentage of Finnish students in international programs? For example, the Bachelor's of Economics at Aalto. It's very low, <laughs> specifically, for, specifically for Bachelor's program uh, programs, it's very low, simply because most Finnish uh, students actually apply for the Finnish, Finnish taught programs. However, for the Master's programs, basically every single Master's program in Aalto, except the Business Law uh, course or pro program, is taught in English, so they're the um, the uh, number of uh, Finnish and international students gets closer to 50, not 50 50 but you know closer towards being split in half however uh, for the bachelor's level programs the amount of Finnish students should be pretty low uh, at least to the to my knowledge so uh, it's it's mostly done for international students but Finnish students can still apply for it uh, anyway, I, I guess you probably don't have an, have exact statistics, but I was wondering if you have an estimate. Is is it more for Finnish people or for internationals? Yeah, good question. It's 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 more for internationals. However, Finnish people can also apply for them, but most people, the clear majority, apply for Finnish taught programs, <coughs> uh, simply because it's easier for Finnish people to get into, uh, because the 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 system that they uh, that we use to apply for them is. Um, it's a bit easier for Finnish people because it's based on the Finnish high school uh, exams as well as an, a Finnish Finnish language or a entrance exams which is done is uh, which is done in Finnish. Uh, however, if, if you want to apply for an English language program, we would need to apply through the same system that you guys use. So basically, doing uh, the SATs and that's not optimal for Finnish people. So there. Mm. Aditya, Aditya actually asking a good question in the chat. Can you please share some uh, s job search portal names in Finland? Yes, I can uh, actually, but instead of doing that, um, I, I because I will forget uh, some of them uh, while I'm actually talking here. What I, again, what I recommend you to do, I have a video about this. Surprise, surprise, I have a video about this separately. So go to the channel and go to the playlist Working Finland as an International Student <laughs> and Check out this video: How to find part-time jobs for international students in Finland. Uh, in that video, in the in the description of that video, I have uh, a bunch of links to different job uh, search portals, and uh, I also talk about them during the video. So check that video out. I, I'm sure you are going to find it very informal, uh, inform informative about this topic. So please check it out. Uh, don't just go through the links uh, because in the video I actually actually explain. Uh, how to use the sites. Uh, some of the sites are mostly in Finnish, but you need to click on certain buttons there in order to change the language of the website into English. So check out the video and then check out the links after that. <laughs> anyway, the next question comes from... <clears throat> next question comes from Aziz, who comes from France, but is uh, Tunisian. Awesome. And Aziz is starting school this semester, doing his degree in uh, computer sciences and mathematics. Nice. And uh, the question is, I don't know if I need a residence permit or to submit a mobility notification. Uh, if you have if you have a uh, citizenship in France, then you do not need to uh, get a residence permit. However, if you do not have a, a, a citizenship, a, if you are not a European Union citizen, then uh, you need to apply for a residence permit, to my understanding. If you're not quite sure, please check the Finnish Immigration Service. 
uh, for more details, uh, I would recommend that you contact them via <coughs> email uh, if you're not able to find the information on the website. Uh, basically, on the website, it says if you don't have a citizenship in the European Union, you need to get a residence permit. But yeah, go to uh, migri dot fi forward slash en and uh, then look for this page and you will find more information from here. If you cannot find the information uh, that you're looking for, for from the website, please contact Migri via email. Uh, as he's saying, I only have a residence permit in France, then my, under my understanding with the limited information that I have is that you need to get a residence permit into Finland. Uh, please, however, please do your own research on this and contact the Finnish Immigration Service just in case. Uh, during the Finnish, uh, Finnish uh, work hours, you can actually go to their website. They have a customer service chatbot. And uh, if you go to the chatbot and you ask for to talk with a real person, basically saying right into the bot, can I talk to a person or human? Uh, if they are present, you can then ask your question from the, the, the customer service agent on, in the chat. Uh, but my understanding is that you do need a residence permit. However, please check this from Mikri just to make sure. I'm not an expert in this field. <laughs> Uh, then the next question, uh, or sorry, the Finnish immigration website mentions you have been, if, if you have been granted a residence permit for studies by some other EU member state than Finland, and if you are covered by a program or an agreement specif specified in the Finnish Act on Residence Permit for Students, in this case, you must submit a mobility no notification to the Finnish Immigration Service. All right, actually, sorry, I didn't actually read the question altogether. Um, the Finnish Act on Residence Permits for Students is in Finnish. Uh, all right, okay, so in this case, please contact me. I, I have not read the... the agreement uh, myself so please con contact me about this sorry i didn't read the uh, uh, question all all the way to, all the way through my bad uh, but yeah I, I that doesn't really help because i, I i'm not sure uh, i have i have not read the agreement myself uh, so please uh, contact me via their uh, customer service um, email or the chatbot then then the next question comes from marco from italy and uh, Marco is uh, interested in doing a master's at Aalto University, uh, specifically in the information system management program. Awesome. A very good program. I have a bunch of friends who have done that and they have been very happy. And the question is, hey, Oliver, I was wondering, is it hard to find a job as an international, uh, I'm an Italian with a master's degree from Aalto uh, Business School? It doesn't matter. Again, the act actual program doesn't matter. Um, uh, so the question, I will reformulate the question uh, to be, is it hard to find an, a job as an international with a master's degree in business? The school and the program doesn't really matter. It's, you know, a general, you know, uh, uh, it's more, ISM doesn't really tell anything to any any employer. The, the program name doesn't really tell anything to anyone. It's simply just that you have a program, that you have a master's degree in business from Aalto University. And everyone knows Aalto University, but again, it doesn't really matter that much, um, to be to be honest. I would be quite older than average when I'm done, 31 years old. Actually, you would not be that much older than, than anyone. I'm actually turning 30 this year. <laughs> And I'm, I'm graduating this year. Uh, most people graduate in, in five, six years. And if they start school at 21, which is uh, quite common in Finland, especially for men, people usually graduate when they're 25, 25 26. So you will have absolutely no problem in terms of your age. Uh, and then it, since you're actually Italian, you're a European citizen. So uh, it might actually be quite a bit easier for you to find a job job here uh, since since many companies that do business in Italy might actually see it as a bonus that you actually speak Italian uh, naturally uh, and uh, again uh, I would say that this well actually let's put put it this way Aldo business school uh, statistics I actually show this uh, every once in a while so if you actually just google Aldo business school statistics and you come to this uh, page <laughs> uh, I just want to give you a reference point here um, Oh, whoops, sorry. Uh, employment. There you go. Although School of Business graduates in working life. Let's click this. <laughs> uh, just to give you a general, uh, you know, a couple of general numbers. Uh, again, it always depends on your ability to find work and be able to pitch yourself to a company to be able to, you know, get a job. However, these are the numbers. So I, I would trust the numbers. <laughs> so uh, let's see. Of, out of our students, 83% found employment before graduation. 
So 83% of Aalto University School of Business students already found a job, full-time job, before they graduate. So that tells you quite a bit. Then, <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. Uh, then, 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 then. Mm, where was the... Uh, 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 uh. Then here, one year after graduation, 98% of all the university school of business graduates were employed or were entrepreneurs. So that tells you quite a bit about the job op opportunities for all the, all the school of business graduates. So absolutely, you're not going to have any problems finding a job as an Aalto University graduate from the School of Business. It's, it's just about you being active in your job hunting, knowing how to apply, where to apply, etc. And again, uh, if you go just a bit upwards in the live chat, I have a link to my job hunting course that is coming out soon. <laughs> and in that uh, course, we are going to go, go through everything that you need to know to make it easier for you to find a job in Finland. So, you know, uh, if you're interested, sign up for the waiting list and you will uh, be the first one to know about the the course, uh, the contents of the course and the prices, uh, price of the course as well. So there. Anyway, hopefully that answered your question. The next one comes from uh, Gujar, who comes from India. And Gujar is applying to the Metropolia University of Applied Sciences, doing a master's in any master's course apparently and the question is i have applied in metropolia university of applied sciences and i got a rejection from the master's course now what are my options <laughs> to study in finland and which uh, intakes uh, are more suitable for a master's course so this depends uh, fully on the reasons for your rejection if you know the reasons for your rejection then i might be able to help you a bit more if you don't know the reasons then it's it's a question of uh, then it's most likely just simply that you weren't the best applicant for the master's course you know compared uh, considering that there are many many other people applying <laughs> so what i would recommend you to do is to start looking for other schools that you could apply to next next time uh, and uh, start looking for the different options that you have Alternatively, since the most common reason for being rejected from a program is simply that you were not good enough of an ab applicant for the university to choose you over other people, that means that you're not really ready to apply for a master's degree in Finland. In that case, what I would recommend you to do <laughs> is to go to education. Uh, dot co and look at their different study programs that their partner universities offer the reason for doing this is because the application period is longer for many of these schools compared to what you would normally have available when you apply uh, to study in Finland through the normal system I mean I will not explain any anything more about this but since you have already applied to study in Finland once you know the system so I would recommend that you go and check out education and their options as well uh, however, of course, I, I need to say that I'm, I'm very sorry to hear that you you didn't get in. So so um, I would recommend, of course, recommend that you try again next time uh, and, and do not give up and just, you know, use this time to make prep yourself better for the applications uh, and you will be you will get in at some point. The next question comes from Aziz and the question is, can I be vaccinated against COVID in Finland? If so, is it expensive? I will not answer this question because I don't know whether or not you can get a vaccination in Finland um, as a student or whether you need to be vaccinated before you come here. I simply don't know the question here, or the answer here. What I would recommend you to do is please go to the website of the Finnish institution for health and welfare. This is the governmental institution that... Um, uh, uh, where you from where you should look for this information uh, in terms of the pandemic please click on this box here they have the latest updates information everything you need to know about the pandemic the situation uh travel restrictions etc so please go go through this website i do not know the answer to your question and i will even if i knew i would not answer your question uh, i don't answer questions about the pandemic during the stream because the situation changes every single day and anything that i say today will be old information next week and i don't want people watching the stream next week to get false information so please go to the actual source so that's thl.fi that's the official source that uh, from where you should be looking for information on this topic. All right, the next question comes from Santiago, uh, who says that he lives in Chile, but he has a European Union citizenship. Awesome. 
And uh, Santiago is applying for uh, a master's in design at the University of uh, Alto as well as the Lut University. Very good choices. And the question is, I finished my bachelor's almost eight years ago and uh, am I too old to apply for a master's? Or actually, I already answered this in the chat. No, you're not. We in Finland do not care about your age when you apply to study here. That's not a thing in Finland. Uh, no, you're not too old. <laughs> Uh, the next question comes from Amin from Morocco and Amin is coming to Finland for work, not for school. And uh, the question is, how does it take to get a work visa to Finland from overseas and how to find jobs in the IT sector? So this is actually a complicated topic and basically you need to do the, the things in the other order. So you basically need to first get, a, get an offer to uh, work in Finland from a Finnish company and then you can apply for a residence permit. And basically the residence permit is it, you, you simply need to go through the process. Um, the Finnish Immigration Service has very good uh, instructions on their website. <laughs> Uh, however, the problem is that you need to basically have a job already on the table, job offer on the table before you apply for, for a residence permit. And this has been criticized very heavily by many Finnish companies and it sucks. But unfortunately, this seems to be the way that it, it's going to be, at least for now. Uh, but I would recommend that you go to the Finnish Immigration Services website. Uh, <laughs> so that's migri.fi migri.com uh, .fi and then come to, to residence permits or sorry, actually from the front page, go to permits and citizenship, <laughs> excuse me, then residence permit, then first residence permit on the, on the left block here, and then working in Finland. And from here, you can get all the information that you need uh, on the residence permit requirements, etc. Uh, you can get the applications, how to apply, uh, end of employment, everything that you need to know about this topic from their website. Again, it's the official source. I have limited information about immigration and, and uh, the residence permit stuff because it's it's really complicated and people uh, ha people actually have paid jobs to figure this out. And I'm not an expert in this field. <laughs> Uh, the quest next question comes from Punit uh, Chabra, who comes from India as well. And then we have uh, Tunit has not yet decided whether or not he wants to. Uh, I'm sorry, Punit has not yet decided whether or not he wants to study in Finland, but is interested in a degree in IT and software. And the question is, I just wanted to know that can I buy a house after completing my master's? So do I um, have to get a Finnish citizenship before buying a house? And how much money do I need to have? in my wallet for buying a house. Uh, first of all, the housing market is completely crazy right now. The prices are where they're super expensive. <laughs> so uh, I would not compare the current prices to to uh, what you would maybe do uh, after a few years because the prices are going down at some point. <laughs> uh, but we're talking about uh, at least a couple of hundred thousand euros to 300,000 euros, depending on what kind of an apartment you want. Uh, especially if you live in the capital region, you will not get almost anything with 200,000 euros. You have to go over 350,000 euros to even get a small apartment. So it's very expensive in Finland. Um, then uh, I don't know whether or not you can actually buy a house in Finland after completing a master's or do you need to get a... I would guess you don't have to get a citizenship. That would be, be very go oh, that would be very odd. Uh, however, again, I'm not 100% sure, but it, it would seem completely weird that you would need to get a citizenship before being able to buy a house in Finland. There's no point in that. Uh, there's a lot of international housing investor investors, for example, who buy apartments from Finland without having a citizenship. So there's no point in requiring a citizenship to buy a, an, an apartment in Finland. So, yeah, but it's expensive. It's super, super expensive. So just, you know, hundreds of thousands of euros starting from, I would say, if you want to have uh, a 50 square meter apartment in the center of Helsinki, you need to be able to pay 350 to 400,000 euros at least. And if you want uh, to have a, you know, your own separate house from outside the center of Helsinki, because there's no, you know, plots in the, in the center of Helsinki, uh, the prices drop somewhat, but you know, 300, 400,000 euros at minimum. Uh, and, and the prices go up really quickly, depending on the size. Then the next question comes from uh, uh, Marie Dool, who comes from Bangladesh and apply, is applying to the LAP University of Applied Sciences to do his bachelor's in tourism. And the question is, how can I improve my improve on my entrance exams, especially math and logic parts. Absolutely no idea. Depends on the, uh, the exams. Um, I have never gone through this process myself. I have never taught anyone to do this. I would simply try to memorize what kind of topics they actually had and what kind of mathematical topics they had and then just 
try to look for sources and uh, maybe a personal teacher or per personal tutor or just use internet as your tool I, unfortunately i don't know the contents of those exams so it's impossible for me to to give any more precise precise advice unfortunately i'm, I'm sorry about that Next question comes from Taragasis again, and the questions are, are first of all saying th thanks a lot, Oliver. Your answers are very helpful. You're welcome. Uh, first, do Finnish people have attractions or interest in football like the Europe club, uh, club football? Uh, some people do. Some people are very fanatic. For example, Finland was in the uh, is currently in the football, uh, the World Cup uh, for the first time, and it's it's very no so, sorry in the Euro Cup I think. Um, you can see I'm not a fan of football myself or soccer. I'm not a f fan myself. Um, I've, you know, I've never had football as my hobby. Uh, some people do, and, and many people play football in Finland. Ice hockey is more uh, popular. However, football, I, I would say, is kind of the next big team sport in Finland that is popular as well. Uh, then second question, if I, be, if I become a football coach in any football club in, uh, in Finland, um, if I know primary level Finnish language, can I, can, uh, will I be able to communicate with Finnish football players by, in, 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 in English? um and finish in basic level depends on 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 what level you are actually teaching so if you're actually coaching professional football yeah, yes then then yes definitely you would be able to communicate with finnish <coughs> players however if you coach for example junior f soccer or junior football then uh, depends on the on the team uh and and the age of the the players uh, but if you, if you want to coach a professional level, then absolutely yes. Uh, the the question is, however, this is not an answer to would you be hired if you don't know in Finnish. It might be that simply for team dynamics, you would need to be able to speak Finnish. However, I have no idea how this works, so uh, I I don't want to say you know yes or yes or no, uh, you know a hundred percent either way. So anyway, the next question comes from Zafer comes from comes from Zafer who comes from Turkey and is starting, who, who is starting school this semester at the Uvascula University of Applied Sciences, doing his bachelor's in software engineering. And the question is, I will study in Finland in four months. Can I get an, uh, a part-time job while studying, whether related to my studies or not? Sure, definitely, definitely you can. However, do take uh, into account that it takes quite a while for you to be able to actually get a job, not because it's not possible uh, or for because there would be any kind of restrictions how, simply because it's very difficult to students especially bachelor's level students to get a part-time job alongside their studies especially in the beginning as, um, uh, especially in your own field because no one wants to hire a first year student during their first semester to do work in their field because you don't really know anything um, and uh, so then i would say that uh, for the first year uh, first years uh, the most Optimal part-time jobs would be, you know, service level jobs, for example, restaurants, cafeterias, etc. However, getting a job in those kind of um, getting those kind of jobs might also require you to speak some Finnish. So it's difficult. It's difficult at, at first. So you really need to learn where, how, when and um, where, how and when to apply for jobs and what the job application process in Finland is like. And again, this is why I actually have the job hunting course coming up soon. And if you're interested, there is a link in the chat. Just if you go just a bit uh, upwards and I can actually link it to the end of the chat right now. Uh, if you're interested in the job hunting course, sign up for the waiting list and I will let you know when the course is actually coming out. Cool. Uh, then Nigwe saying me again, I was wondering about university apartments. I lived in Denmark and universities had uh, apartments for students. Is it the same in Finland? Can I live there with my girlfriend and son? <laughs> so uh, in Finland, universities themselves, so the institutions, it, universities do not have, in Finland, do not have any apartments uh, of their own. Uh, and uh, students are fully responsible of finding apartments on their own. So universities do not have any kind of apartments or dorms at all like for example what they have in the US uh, however we in Finland we have a really really great student, student apartment system and there are a bunch of student apartment providers in each major university city and uh, some of those apartment providers um, do have apartments where you can move in with your uh, spouse and your ch uh, ch children however you would need to apply for a specific type of uh, you would need to apply for a specific type of family apartment. So, for example, if you move into a shared apartment where you have a, share, a room in a shared apartment, then you would need to live there on your own. Your spouse cannot live there with you. So you would need to apply for a, an apartment which is specifically just for your family. So there. 
There you go. Uh, Kanishka, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I answered your question. I've gone through all the questions in the form uh, so far. Actually, uh, there's one more question from Yuri from Italy, uh, who has not yet decided whether or not he wants to study in Finland, but is interested in Aalto University or the University of Helsinki doing a bachelor's in international business. Good. Uh, Yuri, first of all, the University of Helsinki does not offer a program in international business. Actually, they do not have a faculty of business at all. They do have a program in economics, but, but that's completely separate. That's in the social sciences. Uh, they So you would need to be applying for Aalto University, not to University of Helsinki. They do not have business degrees at all. Uh, then the question is, is it easy to make Finnish friends if um, if we are in, no, in in an international program with no Finns? Uh, first of all, there are no absolute, there are no programs that are 100% international. All of them do have some Finns. Uh, however, I do get your question. Uh, yes, it is. Um, well, it's not necessarily easy, but the best way for you to do this is not to hang out just with your international friends, but to also participate in many of the student activities uh, that uh, the university clubs and organizations have, because those are super popular in Finland and participating in different kind of student activities, events, uh, parties, student clubs and organizations. It's a very big part of Finnish student culture. And that's also the best way for you to make Finnish friends while you're studying in Finland. Ah, oh, right. Okay, Kanishka's question, question. Is getting scholarship for undergrads in Finland with a good academic score possible? Every single university degree in Finland that is taught in fin English, regardless whether it's 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 an, on a bachelor's or master's level, all of them have every single university degree in Finland which is taught in English do do have scholarship options for non-European Union and non-European Economic Area citizens. However, they are, uh, the scholarships are limited and they are granted on a competitive basis, and the the minimum requirements for you to get a scholarship depends on multiple different factors and your uh, previous grades, for example, in your case, your high school grades are just one part of that uh, grading system. So for example, if you need to do the SATs, that's going to be super important. If you need to do a language proficiency test, that's also super, super important. If you need to uh, write a, a motivation letter, that's also super important. So it's all the different variables putting together and graded together that is going to um, basically tell whether or not you are going to get a scholarship there is not there is no one single uh, variable or thing that would tell you whether or not you will get a scholarship also the minimum minimum requirements to get a scholarship uh, it's not public uh, the universities do not publicize the reasoning behind granting a specific person a scholarship they have a full prerog prerogative to choose who to grant the scholarships to so you know take that into account Anyways, that's all for the questions for this week. We actually got through all the questions in the form. Thank you for, uh, so much ev for everyone uh, for the great questions, for hanging out for two and a half hours, almost almost three hours actually. Uh, just a couple more things. If you are not yet a member in our Discord server, I highly recommend that you, jo that you join. There is a link in the chat to join the server. The idea of the server is to build a community of people who are interested in studying and working in Finland. And if you are interested in uh, looking for a job in Finland as well during your studies, I have an uh, I have a course, up, uh, upcoming course on job hunting in Finland. Uh, it's going to contain, contain almost five hours of material going through everything that you need to know in order to find a job in Finland. Um, and it's not yet published, uh, but if you sign up for the waiting list, you will be the first one to know when and how much it is, when it's going to be published and how much it's going to be, uh, how much it's going to cost. Anyway, thank you so much for hanging out, guys, and uh, I will see you in the next uh, stream next week. Bye-bye.